date. How was your weekend, Reach? Not good. Not good. <laughs> no, it's it's uh, no. Joy and I were in Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah. And there's a, a lot going on. Right. You know, it's a convoluted story. You really don't want to hear it. I don't want to get into it in too much detail. But you're never going to guess what I watched last night. What, Reach? Me and Joy in bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> we recorded this new show. Yeah? A drama. Shot right here in the streets of New York. Right and I, I got to tell you, it didn't do it for me. <laughs> oh, Reach, that's too bad. Mm. Reach, what was it called? I don't know. Something like uh, legal... Uh, order or law and something and I, I mean get this at the very beginning of the show yeah. they play this scary sound effect it goes scary duh, 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 duh. I nearly jumped out of my shorts when I heard it anyway you gotta hear it you gotta hear it so look I brought it where is it where I brought uh, yeah, there it is I brought it in so you could to share it with you because uh, you know how I feel about you okay <laughs> Reach. all right can you pretend that you actually work around here? Come here, take this tape, do something with it, all right? Get Come over on, here. Gilman. Send it to the control room, see if they can play the sound, and please, please, <laughs> Gelman, be careful with it. I keep lending these tapes out to everybody, and nobody ever gives it back to me. You got something to say? <laughs> I'm right on top of it, Rage. <laughs> Don't you worry. No, I won't worry. I'm never gonna see that tape again, am I? Never gonna see it again. I'm not the screw up you think I am. Oh, Bri. yeah. Oh, Gelman, thank you. I did not tell you that Cassidy did a poo poo in oh, my body. Yeah. No, all by herself. I've got pictures. Where are they? No pictures where's of my, the poo poo. Wait, where's my purse? No. Oh, wait, no, no here. A... Wait, they're in my fanny pack. Hold on. I've got them right here. Look, look. Oh. Oh, oh cool. Oh, I have some pictures to show you, too, okay? Yeah, look, Reach. I don't care. <laughs> Okay. Right. I'm bored already. You know what's going to help me wake up? What? That horrible sound from legal something. I will never be able to get it out of my head. Reach, reach. It's law and order. Is it queued up yet, Gelman? In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These where's, are their stories. Where's the dada? <laughs> There must be a problem in the control room, right, Gelman? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 listen, it's ready for the listening. Are you ready to wear it? Are you? I need to hear it. <laughs> or something. Never forget, mind. Forget about it. Never forget about mind, Gelman. Forget about it. It's never going to make it another season, anyhow, that show. <laughs> How about we go through the papers, all okay, right? That's yeah. what I do. Okay. The business section. Yeah. What, what reads? What some, is it? Some, some show, some, uh, some company called Stop Touching Me. <laughs> Microsoft plans to rescue their nemesis, Apple. That's a fruit, not a company. <laughs> and they're from the brink of bankruptcy with a $150 million investment. Gee, Reach, I don't know. It sounds like a waste of money to me. I don't see how a company like that will ever be able to recover. What else, what else is in the papers, Reed? I don't know. Mm. Talk about a company that's doomed to fail. Get this one. What about this group Where? that wants to create a magic blue pill that helps men to... I can't say that. Wait, Reed, you mean Viagra. Stop it. Don't Reed, say the word. Reed, you don't ever have to worry about that. You're so strong and sexy. You got that right. I got the strength of ten men. Reed. Reed. What? Oh, you're spitting. You're spitting. You gotta. You spit when you talk, Reg. He spits I'm not when he talks. Something. Spitting. <laughs> he is. You know what? She says that, and there's nothing coming out, right? You see anything coming out? You're crazy, Gelman. <laughs> write this down. Write this down. She was complaining about my cold hands yesterday, and today she says I'm spitting. spitting. I'm sick of it. Spit. Reg, I still love you. Of course you do. Everybody loves Reg's. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of hearing myself talk and that stupid sound goes off. What is it? What is it? This is your line, Gelman. Oh, I'm sorry. It was my pager. I just got it. Isn't it cute? I love it. Promise, no. it won't go off again. We're Reach, just... it's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. Wait a minute. You know what? You know what it's time for, everybody? Are you ready? Tell the freeze over. Okay. It's time that we're going to do an audience giveaway. So we're going to pick a number between 1 and 4,227. What number, Reed? I'm going to pick the number three. Why? Which is the number of my favorite player from Notre Dame. Oh, that's what number. Oh, I just love that Jeff Montana. I'll play ball with him anytime. 
Yeah. Congrats to our audience winner. Guess what you win? <laughs> you win a copy of my workout tape. It's called oh, Feel here Fit we go. and Fabulous. <laughs> Congratulations to the winner. Yeah. Everybody's having fun. <laughs> How was that? That was fun, right? Can we come here? Regis Philbin, everybody. Come on up. Nice job. The legend. How was, how was it? How was it playing? We are so confused up here. We don't here. even we know who to. Honestly. I'll start and say I call her Cap. I'm Cap. Gelman. Gelman. Who's this? All right, that was hilarious. They absolutely nailed those looks. So good to see the great Regis in there, too. And during the show, entertainment journalist Brian Balthazar joined Kathleen Hoda and Regis to dish about other celebrity costumes from stars like Kelly Clarkson and comedian Amy Schumer. Take a look. Reach here with the scoop from PopGoesTheWeek.com is the one, the only Brian Balthazar. And of course, Gelman is sticking around. We don't know why. He never does anything. He doesn't know either. <laughs> what does he leave? Uh, he's spending well, the rest of the can show. Can we with... talk about Brian's costume? I wanted to go to the one thing that holds your attention, right? <laughs> the bottle of Merlot. You, I, would, I didn't did you, have a Chardonnay costume. Did you make this? Uh, no, I adapted it because the label that it came with was a little raunchy. It was not good for daytime, <laughs> so, so I made this. Right. All right, so a lot of celebs are, are dressing up for Halloween. Would you go through some of the fun it's costumes? It's true. You know, we all love Bette Midler any day of the week, but she had a fundraiser for a New York organization and she showed up as Winifred from Hocus Pocus. Do you remember this? Look at her, she looks she exactly had like she, did, yeah, she had the wig <laughs> right there. Um, uh, and so this is her in the 1993 movie Hocus Pocus, but she actually came back to perform as this character. And this movie has got a little bit of a cult following because yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker is in it, Kathy and Jimmy is in it. And even Bette herself said as recently as last week, she doesn't know why there hasn't been a sequel because you don't see women doing slapstick that much in film and they clearly had well, a blast. She's gonna be a little busy with Hello Dolly. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she can what do else? anything. What can do whatever else? she wants. Okay, <laughs> Amy Schumer and Ben Hanish. Now, I know you, you probably, oh I don't know God. if you watch Stranger Things, but everyone knows someone who had a friend in, in, in costume as something from Stranger Things. things. And uh, Amy, Amy was no different. She went as uh, Dustin, and her boyfriend Ben, who has a shaved head, went as Eleven. Eleven is that's Ben on the right because she's a little girl with a shaved head. It's a long story, popular we costume. We have no idea what Stranger <laughs> Things is. I know. I kind of had we a feeling this we would happen. Yeah. Okay. This is Stranger Things. <laughs> but they look fun, and they, they they had fun. So next up, though, I, you you heard Kelly Clarkson, who can belt out a song better than anybody. Love her. She's had a Except couple for songs. Except that Kathy Lee. Yeah, I know. Well, you know that's true. Thank you, Reese. You're welcome. <laughs> so, I, I call them as I see them. A oh woman can God. sing. <gasps> so, so Kelly Clarkson did a little tribute to Sia. She sang Chandelier. Sia's actually written a couple songs for Kelly Clarkson. So this is Kelly Clarkson. Let's take a listen. One, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. Throw them back till I lose count. I'm gonna swing God, from she's good. the chandelier. Kelly from the chandelier. She is so Kathy good. Lee's so better good. than that. Yeah. Can show you read? Them. Show them, Kathy Lee, sing. Um, how does the carnival thing go? If you could see, see me, me now, out on the Funship, Funship Cruise. cruise. Yes, We're enough. eating tasty food and drinking what Not we choose. Uh, or <laughs> something like that. Okay. Yeah. So she was wearing the Sia wig. If your bangs were a little longer, you could sport it. So Sia doesn't actually see when she performs. Kelly right. Clarkson said it was like being in your own little world when you're performing, which is kind of an interesting thing, but a little disarming at mm -hmm. first. Would you please move on to something we find interesting? <laughs> Thing. Okay, well, that's a compliment. <laughs> Katy Perry, Katy Perry wowed everyone. She donned prosthetics in a red power suit and went as uh, Hillary Clinton, yeah. which I think you talked about a little earlier. Had a friend with her as uh, Bill Clinton and Who's a security detail. Orlando, Orlando Bloom, Bloom. I know. Orlando Bloom was there, but that's not Orlando. That was another friend. Orlando oh. went in a different direction. Oh. Uh, but the very next hey, we night. we don't judge. That's, we no, don't, we don't uh, judge. No, you, not, not a day of goes go by. Go any direction they want, right, Gelman? <laughs> Of that bit me, that's me. Yeah. Yes, yes, right. When we come back, we're going to revisit Kathy Lee and Hoda's country themed costumes with a special guest you're not going to want to miss. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Every year, we put our best foot forward for our Halloween theme. In 2017, it was no different with star-studded country music costumes. I rocked a fierce mullet, dressing up as the one and only Billy Ray Cyrus. That was a lot of fun. Al dressed up as the iconic Willie Nelson. Hoda went as one of my buddies, Blake Shelton. And then last but not least, Kathy Lee Gifford dressed as Miley Cyrus. After Kathy Lee and Hoda got their country on, they sat down with the real Billy Ray to discuss his long career. Take a look. Some people know my daddy for his multi-platinum records, his numerous music awards, or his oh-so-famous hair. But to me, he'll always be daddy. And of course, we're talking about Billy, Billy Ray, Ray Cyrus. Cyrus. 25 years after his debut album. Billy Ray is busier than ever. He's appearing on the current season of The Voice and is as an advisor on Team Miley, of course. of course. Plus, he is gearing up for a new album. He's dropping November 10th. Y'all write it down. It's called Set, Set the, the Record, record straight. straight. And let me tell you something. My dad is keeping me warm just like he did when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's getting weirder. All right. Hi, Billy Ray. How are you? I'm doing great. So this is new record drops. Are you, are you excited about it? Real excited. It comes out November 10th. Yeah. You can pre-order now. And um, Miley's on the album, a great song called Stand. It's yeah. about standing for what you believe in. Be and the Noah, change too, is right? Is this Noah is on uh, uh, Don Williams' classic Tulsa Time. We made a dance mix of yeah, it. What's this cool. one right here? Yeah. That's Tulsa Time. Yeah. That is Tulsa Time. Oh, a dance yeah. version. I love that. Yeah, so that what, that's what me that? and Noah. What was it like singing with Noah? What was oh, that she's like? She's awesome. Is she? Her instinct, she's she's right on. She's got her own We've feelings about things. We've had her on our show. She's a dog. She's her. really, really loving right now being with Katy Perry. As a matter of fact, she brought me on stage here at Madison Square Garden. Oh, my uh, word. She's opening with Katy Perry. But if you've not seen the show, it's a really great, great show. Katy Perry's Fabulous. She is a great uh, She's a great performer. entertainer. Great mm -hmm. entertainer. Billy Ray, whenever you walk into, whether it's out here on the plaza or on stage at the garden or wherever it is, everyone just feels happy. Like there's something about seeing Well, everybody you. has an achy, yeah. breaky heart. That's right. Yeah. You wow. make them feel better. You have, stay, you have staying power, and that's something to be said in this business, isn't it? It's, you know, you always got to reinvent, you know, yeah. and, I, and you got to love what you do and do it because you love it. And yeah. reinvention, looking for, I love music. That's my passion, the kids' passion. We love making new music. And I love acting too, you know, so just kind of living the best of both worlds and, and in a really great spot right now to be creative. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a killer band, yeah. like the best band. I, I've loved touring so much this year. And uh, because Makes my such band a is so awesome. Doesn't. They're yeah. so supportive. They're just so great. Mm -hmm. And, uh, writing a lot of songs, recording, and just staying really busy creatively. How was Carson? How did you think? Carson, you all, I don't know if you know, we dressed up as Billy Ray. How did you think he did? Give us the, the, the Hello, Dan. Well, I'll, one. I'll use, plug the album again. I got a new song on the album called I Want My Mullet Back. And um, Carson was wearing it. You know, that's what you do with a mullet. You rock that thing out there. You, you got to act like it's supposed to be there. Yeah, it's a simpler time. When you think about mullets, you think about fuzzy dice, ZZ Top, <laughs> Leonard yeah, Skinner, yeah. Skinny Dippin'. And um, life was a little less complex with a mullet. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about getting my back. Are you? Right, really? What well, is your... I'm writing and singing about it, so yeah. I might as well do it. Why not? What is your biggest <laughs> challenge right now? Personal uh, challenge. Personal challenge just to um, be happy, you yeah. know, just... That's it. Just make sure everybody's good, everybody be happy, and count my blessings every day. I believe in waking up and thanking God for the light and, and pray for the wisdom and vision to do the things on this earth that we're all put here to do, you know? Amen. I think. A, guys, just don't forget, Puerto Rico really needs yeah. help right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, that, there's something I'd really like to do. Puerto Rico is getting lost in the yes. shuffle of yeah. so many of the tragedies. So um, just praying like, for wisdom yeah. to do, you know, the things I'm put here to do and for yeah. all of us to do that. Well, there's one more. Preach it, Daddy. Always good to hear from Billy Ray Cyrus. All right, coming up next, Haunted House hijinks. Kathy Lee and Hoda sent Jenna Chanel and Dylan to a haunted house for a scary good time. Take a look. <laughs> All right, so this year our producers asked us to go to a haunted house and we both said, hell, hell no. no. <laughs> so instead we called in a few superheroes who we happen to know who were up for the job. First up for the job, the Jenna. one, the only, Jenna Bush Hager. Come on down, Jenna. Save some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait go, go again, go again. We need the wait, win. Oh, we need oh, the win. Wait, wait okay. Jenna Bush Hager. Beyonce. <laughs> I know, because you are. All right, and finally, 
Dane Dylan Dreyer! Yes. Oh! Oh, get low! Oh. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> this is my move. That's your move? Yeah, come over there. Yes. Okay, okay, so oh, ladies. You guys are the cutest. Okay, wait, we we first feel of all. uncomfortable. We sort of like dressing up as a boy. Wow. That's what I said. Wow. Hager's got some fleeves <laughs> happening. No, that's Wonder Woman. Oh, I'm Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. So did y'all pick your own? Any, is, no. You've got to sign no. up. We were told what to dress up And honestly, this really has nothing to do with our spot. We just wanted no. to be super. Well, we <laughs> yeah. really wanted to dress up today. Us to dress up like this, and we said yes. Okay. Exactly. It was, exactly. Day all it was day this or rock, paper, scissors, and we decided to do this. Y'all look so cute. Go well with the babies tonight. Not exactly like this. Like this. No, no, no. <laughs> I can't. I have no clothes. peripherals. You might, have might cry. New I know. babies in nine months. <laughs> you know? All right. Sure. All right. So what did you guys do? Okay. What did we do? Okay. So here's the thing. I don't think we were nearly as brave then as we look now. You know, we gave it our best shot. Yeah. There's a lot of hand holding, a lot of screaming. Yeah. Because they don't call it blood manor for nothing. I even have a scab. Take what? a look. Gross. <laughs> I'm shaking. I'm like, a little I am, nervous. I'm, I have a cold sweat going on. I've yeah. got a warm this, sweat going on. I don't on. trust this. I'm thing. trying to like. Ah! I don't really want to do this. Me neither. I don't either. I don't want anybody to jump out. Leave us alone. Ah! Now. I don't like this. I don't want to go home. My mouth is so dry. I want to go home. Wait, there's feet. There's feet. Ah! Oh God. Kathy Lee's special stuff. I yeah. fell off the wrecking ball at one point, too. <laughs> you did. I <laughs> did. It was worth it. <laughs> Great spot, you guys. Yeah, that was so At least we got to do it together. Are there any words or just screaming? No, it was just Can we just go back to everybody? Come on, girl. She was the leader. I did feel sick. Now that takes a lot of bravery. When we come back, more of the best of Kathy Lee and Hoda Halloween. Stay with us.
Welcome back. In 2018, we took it back to the decade of decadence. That is the 1980s, of course, and our looks, I don't think, disappointed. Kathy Lee dressed as everybody's favorite material girl, Madonna. Hoda sported her best flashy fit dressed up as none other than the great Elton John. That was here in Studio 1A, and in the spirit of Halloween, it's contagious. Even the guests that come to the show love to get in on all the fun. In fact, that year, Hoda and Kathy Lee caught up with Carla Gugino and Michelle Hoosman, stars of Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House, to talk about the terrifying series. What makes you frightened, like you can't fall asleep at night kind of frightened? Well, for a lot of folks, it's the Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House terrifying new show focuses on five siblings who grew up in the most famous haunted house in America. Now, ad as adults, they're reunited and they're forced to face their ghosts the, of their past to literally do that. Yeah. Two of the show's stars are with us this morning and they came to play. Yeah. Carla G G uh, Gugino you know. and Mick. Kiel yeah. Houseman. Did I get it right? You <laughs> did. Oh, it gosh, I'm so way, sorry. It's a mouthful. Can we just, can we just say names? thank you because you came dressed. Yes. Sometimes on Halloween people come and it's awkward because here we, here we are, are there they are. Yes. We thought you, you, I mean, look at you, you pick your outfits? You know, I'm a huge Bob Fosse fan. Yeah. Uh, um, uh -huh. All That Jazz is my number one favorite movie, yeah. but I love Cabaret. And we were kind of talking about what would be fun that we could do together we as a duo. Well, this was going to be fun. By the way, it's perfect. Yeah, we needed to sex perfect. it up a little. Yes. yes. <laughs> and you got, look at the boots this woman's wearing. Uh, <laughs> so tell us, we were asking a little bit before we started. Uh, this thing has become like a phenomenon. Nothing prepares you really for that. You're just there to do a job, right, when you start out. Yeah, no, I mean, I think what what's... I had worked with Mike Flanagan before on something called Gerald's Game, and he really had such a clear vision. He's of what the director? The director, and, and also um, basically an edits it. And it is his, yeah, his sort of baby. vision. And um, he had a really clear sense of what he wanted to do and the depth that he wanted to go. So I knew it would be really good. But, but what's amazing is that it has been embraced so hugely, and yeah. people are so taken Here's with it. Here's what's weird. You're, there are so many scary things on TV that you can are. find. Why do you guys Including think? Our show. Yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> but why do you think this thing yeah, captivated what, people? Yeah. Well, I think the combination of our show, it being a horror show, but at yeah. the same time, a, a family drama. I think that is what's yeah. new about it, and that's yeah. what's really uh, gripping people. Don't I you mean, think? People seem. To, it's it's a very rare combo where people are truly terrified, and by the end of the show, by the end of the season, people are crying. Yes. You know, but they're terrified as well. We hear all kinds of reports that people can't sleep. People really can't they're, sleep. They're, no, they're real really thing. having a horrible time <laughs> dealing know, with this. I know. A friend of mine said for three nights in a row she's been sleeping with the lights on. Well, now I, said, <laughs> I think. Thank you. I'm not sure. I, I think. <laughs> so it didn't have that effect on the two of you. You know, you're you're in the you're working, it, but but well, was there anything about it that was frightening to you? Well, the, the reading the script for the first time always scared me a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but then we, when, once you're shooting, the process is is pretty, it can be pretty tedious and, and it's slow. technical. And so by the time yeah. we watch it, it you know, I, I didn't, I never expected this response, and I'm I'm thrilled. Yeah, by it's it. it's really. I, I knew it would be really great, and then you never know though if people will find How it. How it will be received. So you know, what was amazing was we shot for eight months. So to keep this particular material bubbling on the back burner for That's eight months, yeah. and the character work. that I played, I mean, all of us, it was really, that was really intense uh, in a exactly. really interesting way. Well, we wanted to say congrats because it's yeah. hard to have a hit these days, and you guys have one. That's major, awesome. Major, major. Right. And thanks for dressing up. <laughs> Y'all are so cute. The Haunting of Hill House is streaming right now on Netflix. But finish our show first, and then you can watch. Yes, please. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us. It's been awesome to look back at Kathy Lee and Hoda's most spooktacular Halloween moments from Hoda as Kathy and Kathy as Regis to Billy Ray Cyrus's Halloween catch up. There's nothing like Kathy Lee and Hoda on Halloween. When we come back next week to check out more of the best of Halloween moments, we'll see you then.
question. Do you have somewhere between two and ten random pumpkins laying around your house right now? I have two. Well, okay, do not throw them away. Cook with them instead. Here to show us how to make oh. a delicious roast pumpkin ramen. Doesn't that sound incredible? Sounds yummy. The author of Mission Vegan, Danny Bowen. Hi, Danny. Danny. Hey, good morning. How are okay, you? So pumpkin, good to see I feel you. like something. I feel like either you make pumpkin pie or you throw it away. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, you know, but. I love this trick. Is like this is the easiest dish. I love making this at home for my son. Okay. You know, it's a good way to get him to eat pumpkin that's not just pumpkin pie. Okay. And where it is that you like pumpkin seeds. I love pumpkin, you love pumpkin seeds. seeds. Okay. Yes. So I want to show you a trick tick. with how to <laughs> clean to get the, get the seeds out. This is a smaller pumpkin. That's yeah, it's like a, a kabocha. Guy. Is that one that you cook like? Can you cook with all pumpkins? You can cook with most any pumpkin. Okay. Any like decorative gourd, you can okay. cook with it. Okay. As long, okay. Just depends on how long it's been sitting. Cut it. Don't. Yeah, no. Yeah. When you but when you cut it in half, you'll see these seeds yeah. here. A good, good trick to get the seeds out is to right. kind of like kind of make an outline around where yeah. it is here, uh -huh. and then just use a spoon and scoop them right just scoop out. Them right? Easy, look, that's easier breezy. than I thought right? it was. So you're uh -huh. gonna scoop all the seeds out and of get this. all that hair and all yeah, that all the business. Good. Okay. And, and then, then what? And then so from here, what we're gonna do is mm -hmm. we're gonna season this. So I'd like to do yeah. a little bit of olive oil. Uh -huh. And this is a good. By the way, it smells amazing in here. Does. Thank you. This is a great trick for roasting pumpkin. Season it with a little bit of olive oil and salt, and then leave it. Leave the skin. On it. That's going to create a little jacket in the oven and it's going to steam inside of this. Oh, right? so you just steam it in the oven for how long? So I have 375, about 45 minutes. And you paint until it with it's that. like just tender. Okay. Ooh, and then look at this thing. I mean, I thought that was <laughs> dough earlier. Really what happens is it steams in this jacket and it becomes like a custard. Feel how soft it oh is? Oh my gosh. And this recipe is amazing because what I do is yeah. I get a little bit of olive oil and garlic, mm -hmm. get it really nice and soft, and like get it fragrant. And do you throw, throw this it right in, in there? The with skin the on skin? this one? Yeah, the skin on this pumpkin. Do you break it up or Yeah, just go ahead, break it up there. Oh my gosh, that is smelling. Okay. So this is the base for our ramen, and this is going to create much like this is actually um, a lot of ramen have a lot of viscosity from a lot of bones and like yeah. this is all vegan, so the the pumpkin is going to give a lot of body okay. flavor. So okay. that's all done. You season that. This is a little bit of mushroom seasoning or like a soup bouillon. If you have like oh. instant ramen, if okay. you have an instant ramen packet, you can throw that in there. Okay. A little that's bit of that, a little salt. bit of salt, okay. a little bit of soy sauce, soy, okay. and yeah. then water. You want to cover this with oh. water. Let that, so that it kind of cook boils. away. Yeah. Look at that. And this can then once this comes to a boil. You know, let it simmer for about five minutes. And it's then good take to go. it off. That's okay. it. So I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite chili pastes. Uh, right now at the farmer's market, there's really amazing chilies still. Um, these have just been roasted. Are these spicy? Some of them are spicy. Okay. Do you like spicy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, a kind of a maybe sure. Do you take the seeds out or you leave them all in? I like, what I do is I roast them and sound the same as the pumpkin. Olive oil, salt, roast them but until they're soft and then throw them under the charbroil ah, and get them kind of burned, boiled up. So, then, so all the seeds, all the hot stuff stays everything in. Everything stays in. A little bit of vinegar. Mm -hmm. When you cook for your son, do you take some of the seeds out or no? So when my son, when I cook for my son, I I, I give him a little bit. You yeah, know, I, I like to like, he likes to like experiment introduce. with Slowly introduce. How old is he? He's almost nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm coming over to eat. I have a nine yeah. year old too. So, this will go in there. You blend that till it's soft. Okay. And so, for the actual ramen, Really, really simple. You get it like this is our broth. It's Gosh. been cooked. Mm -hmm. You add some noodles in here. You add some spinach or some greens. Mm -hmm. Once the noodles are cooked and the greens oh have gosh. wilted, it looks Delicious. like this. Spicy. Do you want a little bit of spice or any spice or no? I think they did. They put spice in. No. I put. I didn't put any yet. But I, here's extra pumpkin seeds if you like. Mm. If you have pumpkin mm. seed oil, you can put pumpkin seed oil on there. If not, olive oil. Oh my god, that Isn't is great. Danny, that's so yummy. I get why your yummy. kids would love this. I'm yeah. gonna take some home. Oh my god, that's so oh good. Gosh. And get spinach too. Yeah. yeah. Delicious. I love it. Thank you, Danny, and mm -hmm. for this recipe and more go today.com slash food. It is Superfood Friday, and this morning we're going all in on fall. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is here to serve up two must-haves for the season. Good morning. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. Oh, my gosh. I have two fabulous fall recipes, and these are things that typically we get out in restaurants, so I'm excited to show you how simple they are. Oh, and we're starting with a hearty harvest bowl. What goes and into a it as a base? Five steps here. The first step is a leafy green base. Mm -hmm. Next, and it could be any kind of leafy greens, any mescaline mix or arugula or kale or spinach, they're all good for you. And next we have our grains. So I'm putting in quinoa, but you can use wild or brown rice. Um, you could use whole grain noodles. Anything goes because you know you are the boss of your bowl. <laughs> next, it's all about the roasted vegetables. So I did some seasonal picks. I have sweet potato, Brussels, and um, red onion. Ooh. But broccoli florets can go in there, Kali. And what's um, your, your really trick to roasting them? High heat, 425 for about 25 minutes. And all I do is I mix them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, mm -hmm. salt, and pepper. And sometimes fresh thyme because, you know, you really want to feel those fall flavors. Mm -hmm. And next the is the 
Yeah, so I'm, again, sticking with the season. I have sliced apples. Sometimes I do pear. If you don't want to slice, you can chop. It's a little bit easier to eat. Or you could throw in some raisins or even, um, like, dried cranberries. And, of course, the protein. So here I'm doing grilled chicken, mm-hmm. but this could also be salmon. It could be sliced eggs. Um, you could do lentils, shrimp, anything goes. And a little bit of garnish, you know, again, seasonal, some pumpkin seeds. I have here almonds, pomegranate seeds. Wow. And um, on Instagram and on today.com, I gave a recipe for a light balsamic vinaigrette and a lemon vinaigrette that Ooh. you could pour oh. over it. But again, so easy. I'm just going to hold so this up before. Because it checks off all the boxes yeah. of things you'd want to eat. Yeah. Yum. It's your your yes. food pyramid it's in a bowl. Beautiful and hearty and yeah. nourishing. Okay. The best Love of it. everything. Yeah. All right. Now this is, I hear, is this your favorite? Well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm dead set <laughs> against the pumpkin spice. Uh, but Joy's got <laughs> something, a latte that actually has pumpkin in it, which is my big complaint. There's never really any pumpkin. Joy saves the day. <laughs> Al, I'm like hoping I'm on a mission to make a PSL lover out of you. So here's the thing. Like, if you're like me and so many people just become obsessed during October with these pumpkin spice lattes, instead of getting them out most days during October, mm-hmm. if you end up making this version I'm going to show you, at the end of the month, you're going to save about $100 and 4,000 calories. Wow. I mean, that's pretty huge. Okay. And it's easy. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting with just three quarter cup of milk. I have almond milk here, but this works with cow's milk. It works with soy milk, Mm -hmm. coconut milk, any milk goes. Here's the real pumpkin. It's canned pumpkin puree. Uh And I'm just adding in two tablespoons. Whoops, this is my vanilla extract. Almost had a little, whoa, (laughs) crash. It's a vanilla extract. It looks good Um, though. Here's a little bit of maple syrup Mm -hmm. and my pumpkin pie spice. Now, mm. let me show you on the stove. We're just going to simmer this up. Right. I'm going to grab, going to make the whole thing. Simmer it up. It's going to look like this. It comes together very quickly. And you pour it into your mm. mug. Mm. And I'm going to add either one ounce of espresso or I'm putting brewed coffee in just a quarter of a cup. Mm. Wow. And because... Everything's better with a little bit of whipped cream, oh, guys. Of course I'm gonna it give is. It a there shot. you go. You know what? I and think you're right, I would, Al. I would, I would give that yeah, a shot. I, would, I really yeah, love that. To try that. George, thank you so Joy, much. That looks We're going to try that. Can't yeah. wait. And again, mm. for these recipes, you can always head to today.com <laughs> slash food. That looks yummy. <laughs> Because somebody who's with us, we have not seen in person in such a long time. You're sure to show us one of his favorite one pot recipes straight from his new cookbook. It is the Emmy winning host, Danny CO, author of Naturally Delicious Dinners. Do you get the theme over here? Yeah, pumpkin We're with you. pumpkin yeah. is the hero ingredient here, okay. and it's so easy. And what okay. you want to start with, it's a pumpkin mac and cheese. This is basically a pumpkin spice mac and Wait, cheese. Wait, we, we didn't get your true opinion on the, on the mac and cheese with the raisins. We'll get to that at the end. We're going to talk about the end. <laughs> 
because I have an opinion about that. But what we want to start with, guys, this is a roux, okay? okay. Do you know what a roux yes. is? It's of just course, butter and Orleans. flour. You yeah. want to mix them together because you don't want to have raw flour in there. But a roux is a thickening agent, and yeah. there's three different stages of color when you cook a roux. Mm -hmm. When you cook it for a little bit of time, it's a white stage. Yeah. It's called a bechamel. And yeah. then it gets darker and darker. The longer you cook it, the less of a thickening agent it is. Yeah. For a mac and cheese, you want it thick. So you want to just cook it for a second? A little bit. Look, look at the swap out right here. It's just this beautiful is that white. Kind of creamy foamy. color right here. Okay. So very important step to do this. And then the next step in a mac and cheese, by the way, you can make this actually gluten-free and dairy-free too. Oh. Oh, that's cheese. good. So okay. instead of it's, you could use like a, a vegan um, butter instead, okay. and then like an unsweetened. Yeah, you have to make sure it's unsweetened. Milk. If you use okay. a vanilla almond milk, it's not going to taste. We're going to add a little bit of just warm milk. What you don't want to use cold milk, just regular whole milk. Okay, and, and just cheddar, cheddar cheese, and we're going to stir this together. Mm, make that cheddar sauce. And, and get this all to melt and have it be okay. really good. Do you want to add some salt? Sure. There you go. Excuse Here's me, some salt right to here. That is nutmeg. That's so right. what we're going to do is you want to use fresh. Nutmeg, if you okay. can. This makes Maybe it like pumpkin it. spice, kind mm -hmm. of. This this is the big difference because it's such an easy dish. This is where a spice actually makes a huge yeah. difference, and just a little bit of a fresh little. nutmeg. How do you know when you have enough? Just a, a little bit, just a, a little. I a would splash. say ten seconds. Ten seconds. Yeah, but you can smell it already. And then right? is this like the, the this is can the, pumpkin? Yeah, pumpkin puree. The, one whole can of pumpkin puree. Libby's okay. is my favorite. Goes right into mm -hmm. this one, and that's it. I love to use the whole can because what do you do with like? I know. Okay. The laughter. Oh, and then now we have what? one more ingredient. <gasps> we no, have, you did not. We have raisins. No, no. you did not. And then this goes into <laughs> the trash. <laughs> Adding raisins. Danny, I knew you were my favorite. Thank you. Adding raisins, what? That was the most horrific thing that I've seen. It was. <laughs> it's like, why not? Let's add whipped cream to it while we're at it. <laughs> on TikTok does not mean we have to do it, right? Just because it's never been done doesn't mean it needs to be done. Well, just because it's going viral on TikTok doesn't mean we, we need to do it. It makes you sick. Like, here's, right. my, here's some chocolate dipped, you know, pickles. Yeah. <laughs> all right. uh, now we add our, our cooked macaroni. And what okay. I love about this, you can use a gluten-free pasta. Do you cook it al dente? You Nobody want, likes al dente, Well, you Danny. want to because you cook it here. You, you cook it al dente because you're going to bake it. Everybody, for, says, uh, oh, everybody says that, but don't you hate yes, pasta Yes, but if you're cooking it twice, you want to Start hard <laughs> to make soft. You don't want the pasta to fall apart. Thank you, Danny. And we choose Danny something and I like, are on the same page we, today. We choose like a macaroni. We choose something that has some texture to it. So like it holds that. onto the I sauce. Like this is like a oh, we only have a couple of seconds. Oh, what? Let's eat. Okay, I'm gonna pour it into the cast iron. And over here, you can here, do it in a big mm, cast iron pan, yeah. or yeah. you can do it in little mugs, just like that. These are cute. I these like the guys. mugs. Me too. Mm. How is it? Yummy. Mm-hmm. Listen, this has just enough flavor. To feel festive. And you taste the pumpkin. The, I picked this but over the raisin. Sweet. It's mm -hmm. not sweet. It's, it has like a nice earthy texture to it, a little sweetness. This savory. is delicious. Danny, you're the Double best. Double it, triple it. Danny, it's so good to see Danny, you, honey. We love you. See you Come too. back and see us soon uh, for these recipes. Head to today.com. <laughs>
This mm. is chef and TV host Elena Besser. She has not one, but two desserts two. that we can make ahead of time. Elena, good morning. Good morning. You. Good morning. Good morning. Always good morning. great to be with Pumpkin you. Pumpkin mini cheesecakes. You know it. Yum. It's always fun when you have an individual dessert portion, and mini versions sure. of desserts just bring me so much joy. So we are changing up the traditional graham cracker crust, and we are using ginger snaps to add that autumnal flair. So we have some okay. brown sugar. We've got our ginger snap cookies, and we are going to pulse this on up in a food processor. Ooh, can I until, pulse? I love to yes, pulse. Yes, please do. Just what do you got, the, what just do you got the over there? What is that, butter? Yes, and we've got some melted butter. Feel free to get after that. And then, oh, once it is all night, keep on going. Yeah. Ooh. And once it is fully the consistency of sand, okay. you're going to stream in. Greg's really having a good time. You're oh. doing great. You're oh, going to stream sorry. in that melted No, you're doing it. Keep going, Greg. Keep going. Stream in that melted butter. And it's going to end up looking like wet sand. Then you oh, push yeah. it into the little ram. <laughs> exactly. And you take a glass oh, and press it down to create this little crust. Chanel, if you Honestly, want to try Honestly, I could just eat this by itself. I thought that was brown sugar. <laughs> it, it's a little brown sugar it's like brown plus sugar. ginger snacks. Oh, that is, yeah. that's good. Oh, right, right. This is by itself. Right? right, so you do that. And so you do that. You pop that into the oven for about 10 minutes to set. And then we're going to start on our filling. So okay. we have cream cheese. We have brown sugar. We've got white sugar in here. And we are Other going... Side. Yeah, I keep doing that. I know, it's KitchenAid, Elena. It's, it's a KitchenAid. Yeah, I love KitchenAid. They're the best. <laughs> um, and we're going to whip this on up. Then we're adding in all of our other flavorings. So we've Great. got the cinnamon. Eggs going That's a warm we got flavor. our eggs. That's a warm we flavor. have, oh, ooh, one wow. hit. Hey. 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 One more. Let's go. Wow. Hey. Hey. Look one at this more. executive chef right there. There we go. Hey. Oh, man. Oh, in my man. kitchen at home. Look at that. Skills. I love it. And then we're adding a she little bit like of you kosher salt. <laughs> exactly. We're adding in some vanilla extract. And this wouldn't be a pumpkin cheesecake unless we had our pumpkin puree. So you True. could also swap out sweet potato if you want. You pop that in here. You end up having this delicious mixture. Yum. Wait, where do you get that? Is that in a can? Yeah, you can get it in a can. Okay. Let's save the time. You know? okay. I know, I know. <laughs> and then we are pouring it into all of our ramekins. It's a nice Thick, I love delicious a good batter. Same. Who doesn't love a good ramekin? No. Well, Pop that in, and then we are going to sure. bake it in the oven. And this is the fun, really awesome. chefy mm. moment here. Okay. And this is what's going to give us that luxurious, creamy texture. We are going to add in water wow. to the bottom. This creates a water bath. So what happens is, instead of that cheesecake cooking too quickly, it's going to slowly poach it, so you get that really delicious, ah. creamy texture. I gotta get your food. And, but Wait, there's more. There's Wait, more. there's more. Oh, we're going to start eating. Have it. Some so Please start eating it. We have some brown sugar oh and gosh. butter. We've got pumpkin seeds. We have mm. pecans oh or God. pecans, Ooh. however you All say it. it. And a little bit of salt. Mix it up. We're making Girl. a brittle. Oh, my. We That's have really this awesome. brittle. Ridiculous. And we're topping it with... Oh. Um, some whipped cream that is sweetened with maple syrup. I wasn't expecting this. The fall flavor. It's Isn't so it soft. Fun? Yeah, Here's it's a thing. pump. It's Each like a bump layer bump. is yummy on its own. Like oh, even yay. that right there is yummy. Oh, like, I'm so. And it's fun to just snack on the brittle because it comes in I mean. these nice. Wait, we don't talk about the crumble. Oh, we have to talk about the crumble. Okay. Okay. So crumble is such an easy dessert that you can make really far in advance. You can make all of these in advance, by the way. Mm. This you can store in the fridge for up Gosh. to a week, unmold and serve it. And then with the crumble, you could make this oh, and freeze more. it, wrap it on up. This is cranberry and apple crumble. Uh, oh you bake gosh. it in the oven, let it cool completely, wrap it up, put it in your freezer, and then right mm. before you're serving, pop it into the oven at 350 degrees. You're going to put tin foil over it, pour some melted butter over it oh to God. reheat it, Whoa. and then serve it a la mode because always ice cream. Mm. Is there some lemon something in here? What's there's some on? lemon, there's a little orange. If orange isn't your thing, you can just omit the orange. Um, oh, this is but great. I'm happy you guys like it. Crumble's so easy. It's so delicious. It's a crowd pleaser. And what I love about it, not very many dishes. You yeah, make it in the skillet, yeah. you pop it on the table. Oh it looks stunning. Welcome back. And it's time for Make Ahead Monday. You no, know, I'm not a huge fan of the pumpkin spice. Uh, canned pumpkin? That's another story. <laughs> if you've got some leftover from the holiday, our good buddy, Chef Ryan Scott, has two creative ways to use it. Good morning, Hi. Ryan. Good morning. Hi, guys. Man, I miss you guys. How are you? you? But you're going to make up for it by helping us with make some souffle pumpkin Ooh. pancakes. That sounds so good. Al, what's really cool about this recipe is you can make this with a box mix. So I take one cup from a box mix that everybody has at home, mm -hmm. and you can make your souffle pancakes just from a little bit of 
Canned pumpkin. So here's the thing, because the holidays, a lot of people think canned pumpkin. I don't want to cook with it anymore. Let me show you two ways of cooking with it. First and foremost, these pancakes, which you guys saw in the little teaser mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. get a little pecan crumble on top, which yes. are really simple to do. So what I did was I took some pecans, I boiled them with a little bit of powdered sugar over the top, some pumpkin pie spice, and then I baked them for about, um, about 15 minutes. Then let's go ahead and make this mixture. So you guys, look in here. I've got okay. eggs, mm. milk, pumpkin pie spice, the canned pumpkin, and a little bit of sugar and milk. Okay. And then what I do is I mix the whole thing up with one half cup of pancake batter. There is your leavening agent. There's your flour, okay. your baking pancake soda, Pancake batter or, or pancake mix? Yes. Pancake mix, D. Thank you very much. It's the one from the box. <laughs> it's, it's the... It says very light and fluffy mix. So whatever you have at your house, whatever the box mix is, I'm not promoting them. Uh, you just go like that. So guys, what you do is now you mix this together with your pancake mix uh -huh. and eggs and pumpkin batter. And once this all comes together, I took four egg whites and I beat Ooh. them to make sure they're souffléed. These oh. guys go inside here. You fold the whole mix together, and then you come over to my pan. Now, check this out. A lot of people always ask how to do pancakes perfectly. I take a little bit of uh, Al's Aquanet and mine here, okay? <laughs> and we put this right on top, and we spray this, and then I take and a ice cream out. scooper. Hmm. Yeah, I wipe it out. D. So I wipe it out because I don't want the pancakes to have little blotchy flower spots. I mean, oh. uh, fat spots in there. So that way you just kind of wipe it out and then you take it and just go like this. And you've transferred a little box that is a classic box that we get the store into pumpkin pancakes. Yeah. Then I put them on a roasting rack to let them cool down for a oh. second. That way they don't keep steaming on the bottom because oh. there's nothing oh, worse like than have a pancake that's super beautiful and then it steams and then it's wet and then right, it's not, right, a, not yeah. a nice thing. Okay, Brian, so you got, you got something now, with you got something with bacon. Yeah. Ow. I knew I was with you today, buddy. I got you. Okay. <laughs> so what I have here, guys, is some potatoes. I took some potatoes and I boiled them with salted water. And then I roasted pumpkin out of a can. And what I did from there is I took these potatoes. I transferred them out. I put them inside my mixer. Then I cooked bacon and sage, which is right here, Al. Mm. Crispy on the side. And this bacon mm. and sage is going to go inside my pumpkin potato Ooh. puree that you guys do for the holidays. I don't know about you all, but I have a Southern grandmother and an Italian grandmother, <laughs> and the leftover bacon fat is going to go right inside the Ooh. mixer with sour oh, cream, God. butter, eggs, and the potatoes. Can these I use guys leftover come together. Potatoes? Like leftover mashed potatoes? Yeah. Dylan, I made these last night, and oh. all I did was just reheat them. So there boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, whatever you got. These go in the mixer with a little bit of bacon love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the beginning of December tomorrow. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll watch the wait a little bit later, time. okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just take this, guys, and you mix it up real quick. It comes together, and you can make potato pancakes that have a little bit of pumpkin in them. That's so All great. the good suspects, right? Super easy. And then, because this is for Al, I put extra Ooh, bacon. You're right the man, top. Ryan. No, thank you so much. We miss you, my friend. No. Thanks, Can't Ryan. Wait to see you. Love you guys. All right. Uh, for more too. on these recipes and so much more, go to today.com slash food.
We are back on this Superfood Friday with the latest trend that's taking over the internet. I'm sure you've seen videos of people making these butter boards all over your feed. So of course, you know, everyone wants to try it. And today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here. But you have a special spin on it. At first, I was like, okay, no way you're <laughs> making a butter board. And I was right. This, is, this first one is a little bit more of a Mediterranean board. Yeah, I think you're going to love this. So we're putting a healthy spin on the trend. And this first one, to your point, I'm calling a Mediterranean hummus board. And it's starting with hummus. So here I have two cups of hummus. And it can either be store-bought or if you're super motivated, you could make your own. And then you spread it out onto a board. Now, my board is about 19 inches. So if you want to scale this down, it's very easy to just use a smaller amount of hummus and you can make a single portion or maybe split between two people. But I love this because you could also bring it to a host that's mm -hmm. having a party. I mean, it's like, it's a big statement, right? And you see how easy Already it is to just spread it, it out. Already made it there? Well, you could do either, Al, because I'm going to show you how Lickety Split this comes together. So after it's spread, now you're going to add all of these yummy toppings. So I have here some smoky paprika, because I just love the taste of that. And I'm adding, these are just canned sliced black olives mm -hmm. over the top. So the idea is we're building all of these layers of yummy, nutritious Mediterranean goodies. And now we have some chopped um, onion. And now I'm going to put on a lot of greens. Here I'm doing chives and I'm doing some scallions, but you could do cilantro or That's parsley. Good. Really That's anything great. goes. And then lastly, to top it off, and Al, this I would do when you get there to yeah. the party. A little bit of extra virgin olive oh, oil. Okay. And then you just surround it with sturdy scoopers. So I have, I love sturdy using... Scoopers. <laughs> yeah, because you, you don't want them to droop. So yeah. I have here a no, lot of sliced cucumbers okay. and, of course, some whole grain crackers. Okay. And I also have um, oh, yeah. Slice, warm bread. Oh, yeah. That'd be good. Ooh, and dive spears. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, this is great over here. And guys, look at these, like, I mean, bell peppers. I got large bell peppers, but also the little baby bellas. Mm -hmm. And you could put that all over. And you've got this gorgeous, gorgeous, colorful bowl That's that just came together in a couple of and, minutes. And then so I love this one. And now, Joy, you've got a, a sweet board. Oh, it's yummy. I'm really excited to share this one with you. So we're taking a very different direction here, and we're going to do an addictively sweet dessert bowl. Mm. And dessert bowl. It's a spread, or it could be a board. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a pumpkin peanut butter. We're leveling up peanut butter, which already has a lot of heart-healthy fat. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is I'm adding equal parts. So this is about half a cup of creamy peanut butter. If uh. there's nut allergies in the house, you could swap in any other nut butter. And this is 100% um, pumpkin puree. Okay. Oh, and I that's add not this yeah. together. Now I'm going to sweet sweeten it up because it is a dessert. I just looked I'm over my shoulder a... thinking they would roll some in, but that didn't happen. <laughs> I that wish. A little bit of that's maple syrup. You could also use brown sugar, or if you want to go in a no added sugar direction, uh -huh. you could certainly use one of the stevia or the monk fruit mm -hmm. blends. Could you use a little honey? And then, yeah, honey would be good too. You could absolutely use honey. Joy, make her yeah. sorry. <laughs> and you know what? I tried it with honey. It, uh -huh. To me, um, I preferred the maple syrup, and okay. I also preferred okay. the um, brown it's your, sugar. It's your recipe. You do honey. you. <laughs> yeah, but other, you could absolutely use honey for honey lovers, for sure. Yeah. So you keep stirring. This is nice and smooth. Now let me show you what it looks like. Today. You're going to love it. And over here, mm. I've loaded up my board with, um, again, sturdy scoopers. Oh, so here we have scoopers. apple slices. Yes, pears. It's pear season, so I have pears graham and crackers. also graham crackers. Oh, we got to go for the graham crackers. I am making crackers. this as a snack for my kids today. Nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you, so, Thank you Joy. So good. Thank you so much. Thank it's very doable. i got to get some pumpkin. I look yeah. forward to you coming back in the studio. You and just bring some for me. Bring me some today. of these treats. <laughs> for these recipes, just head to today.com slash food. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost. It is National Adoption Week, something that's 
near and dear to my heart. And today we are bringing you stories of people who built beautiful families through adoption. So to kick things off, my conversation with Emmy-winning journalist and former Congresswoman Marjorie Margulies. In 1970, she was the first single woman in the country to adopt internationally. She went on to raise 10 other children and took in a family of Vietnamese refugees. Here are some of her life lessons. Met her in Korea, 1970, which stuck out her hand, said, how do you do? And that was the only thing she knew how to say. And how do you do? Her own yeah, English words. So sweet. In 1970, Marjorie Margulies was a successful TV reporter when an assignment brought her to Korea to do a series on adoption. She came home with a story of her own, a seven-year-old daughter named Lee Hay. Well, you were the first single female Correct. to adopt internationally right. in the United States of America. Correct. That's a big deal. I don't know. I knew I wanted to parent. I didn't know if and when I would marry. I also knew that I had done all these stories on hard to place kids. And I thought, hmm, that's something that I could do. I, I realized the challenges. I just did. But somehow Marjorie and Lee Hay made it work, maybe too well, because three years later, covering a story in Vietnam, Marjorie brought home Holly. And Holly was kind of a firecracker. Holly was impossible. She smoked. She was six years old. She was a pickpocket. She, and She and, smoked when she was six? Yep. She smoked cigarettes? Mm-hmm. Wow. Here you are, this intrepid reporter. You've got two young children who you're caring for. Your plate's way full, but it just wasn't full enough. People say that you just can't do it all at the same time, mm -hmm. and you can't do it with the same intensity. I didn't do it well. I mean, I just did it. I just realized that's your thing. You know what you do? You do things because your gut tells you to do them. And soon, Marjorie's gut was telling her that her heart was big enough for more, way more. In 1975, she married Congressman Ed Mesvinsky, who had four daughters of his own. They would go on to have two biological children. Yet even with eight children running around, when asked to take in a family of refugees, Marjorie had one answer. Let's do it. Vietnamese refugees were coming in, and we were called as a family of five, and they lived with us for 25 years. Wait, I need just a minute to sit with that. Wow. What was dinner time like at your house when, when the whole kit and caboodle were there? I can tell you if we ever had guests, yeah. we, you know, Holly would walk in and she'd say, are we going to adopt any of these people? <laughs> uh, it was fun. And in the middle of it all, Marjorie ran for Congress and won. She served as a congresswoman from Pennsylvania for two years, and she made it all work. Your home was described as a magic circus. Oh, God. Was that, is that, is that about right? I, I, the circus part is right. <laughs> the, the magical is a little bit of an exaggeration. But even in a magic circus, there can be devastating heartbreak. In 2016, her beloved Holly, whom she had adopted from Vietnam, passed away from cancer. She was just 48. There's just nothing like losing a child. People who say time will will heal. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it really doesn't. But she was amazing and left an incredible uh, kind of legacy and time to remember. For now, Marjorie spends as much time as she can with Holly's two children, two of 21 grandchildren she can call hers, as well as sharing some of those grandparenting duties with former President Bill Clinton and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Her son Mark is married to their daughter Chelsea. What did you love the most about being a mom? I loved the the curiosity, mm -hmm. you know, the, the challenges. I got myself to the point that I was not going to feel guilty being at work and not being with the kids, or being with the kids and not being at work. Mm -hmm. That I was going to reconcile that and understand that that's what made me, I think, a better mother. What does adoption mean? That means you have to, you can keep her forever and nobody could take, uh, take her away. Ever? No. Now to a Florida couple who dreamed of starting a family for years and did it in the most unexpected way. There you go. Meet baby Zoe, Vincent and Katie's precious bundle of joy. A sweet little girl they call their own miracle. It's a gift from God is all it is. There's nothing else to explain it. 
Nearly six months ago, Vincent showed up for work on a day that would change his life forever. He's a firefighter in Ocala, Florida, and was pulling his regular 24-hour shift. At 2 a.m., an alarm went off. He recognized the sound immediately. A newborn had been placed at his station's safe haven baby box, a device that allows a mother in crisis to safely and anonymously surrender a child. Vincent said the moment he opened that box, his whole world changed. I opened the box and <laughs> there she is. I picked her up, she wasn't crying. As soon as we locked eyes, that was it. I was in love with her. Vincent's training kicked in. For Ocala Fire and Rescue Standards, he helped deliver the baby to the local hospital. He handed her over to the medical staff along with a special note. I wrote on the note, you know, hello, my name is Vincent. I've been working for the fire department for the past eight years. Me and my wife have been trying to have a family for almost a decade now. And if given the opportunity, we would like to adopt this baby. Vincent and his wife Katie first met in the Navy and got married in 2016. For years, they struggled with infertility. We just wanted to be parents and be able to care for a child. So when he said it was a baby dropped off in the baby box, I mean, my head started spinning. The couple was already registered to adopt in the state of Florida. Two days later, they were able to take the baby home from the hospital. I picked her up and I looked at her she looked at me and she smiled <laughs> and that's when I knew that I was in love and um, that this was my daughter. From this point on, you are her legal parents. Then in April, the adoption was finalized. Our family was complete. For us to not have to worry and for her to be our daughter legally <laughs> was was amazing. Zoe's parents say their daughter is perfect and already full of personality. She is the happiest baby. She's really nosy though. She does like to see what's going on all times. The couple has not been in contact with Zoe's birth mom, but wants her to know that Zoe is loved beyond words. The birth moms are heroes too. We needed each other in her moment of crisis and the way that we were able to help each other was through that baby box. A beautiful blessing, well worth the wait. Never in my wildest dreams would I have ever thought that I would <laughs> be a dad to a baby, um, let alone a baby girl. We never want to take her for granted. We want to be the best parents we could be for her. And Vincent and Katie are here <laughs> with beautiful little Zoe. Um, you guys, Families are formed in the most <laughs> unexpected ways. You never know what when one day is going to change your whole lives. Yes. Will you describe just the moment when you knew when you knew that your family was going to be a family of three? I think it was probably the the day we finalized mm -hmm. our adoption um, because you know of course before we finalize anything can happen and um, we've experienced that in the past. So when that judge said, you guys are a family. Um, we kind of, afterwards, we looked at each other and we're like, we're a family, <laughs> holy guacamole, we're a family. Um, so that was easily the best day of our lives and that's when we really knew like we were a family. It's so amazing. I mean, first of all, this is just an extraordinary little baby. She, you can just see yeah. everything. She's just truly special little babe. Yes, you, Zoe, we're talking about you. Vince, when you locked eyes with her, yes. I mean, you, we see it in the picture yeah. there. You yes. holding her, yes. you two are locking eyes. Yes. I mean, it feels, Mm -hmm. Like divine destiny. It, it definitely was. I mean, God definitely put her in our lives and, you know, gave us the opportunity to adopt her. And, and uh, I mean, even now, you know, when she's up at night and I feed her, I kind of keep her up a little longer than I should, <laughs> just, so we can lay, just so I can rock her and just look at each other and just, yeah. we stare at each other all the time. I mean, it's probably one of my favorite things to do is just watch her and look at her while she looks at me back. Up next, a man who changed the lives of three young brothers. Stay with us.
Welcome back to The Boost. We have a story from our series, Dad's Got This. Craig Melvin met a single dad who recently adopted three young brothers, his journey guided by the memory of his own father. Oh. This isn't just a dad and his right. three boys passing the pigskin. Oh. There's so go, 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 much go, go, more to this go, go, story. <laughs> I discovered um, a path where you can foster to adopt. What better way than to, to change the trajectory of someone's life by bringing them into your home? and just trying to show them that somebody cares for them, yeah. right? At age 45, Jason Smith took a leap into the unknown by fostering three brothers, Tavon, Irion, and Tavion, ages 9, 10, and 11. His home would be their sixth foster placement in the last five years. You didn't decide to just foster one child. No, no. <laughs> no, you decided, you know what? I think I could do three. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that the plan from the beginning? Craig, that was not the plan from the beginning. So when you swing, your hand will go right over this, right? Right in between there. Jason took a nine-week training program with the Department of Family Services in his home state of Nevada. They prepare you almost for the worst, right? To help you understand this is a different type of kid. Yep. And here's what they may come with. And here's how you deal with that. You have a lot of choice and decision in that process. Yeah. And so do you want a boy? Do you want a girl? Do you want a kid with special needs? Do you, you know, so I was looking for a son, right? That I can potentially be a great match for. And in the process of looking at children their profiles, I saw this sibling group. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's, that's some handsome kids. And I read their stories, cool, and I clicked on them and it seemed like fate and destiny wanted us to be connected. During this time, Jason was freshly grieving the death of his own father, Tucker. I lost him in June 30th, 2021. I dealt with it, I flew home, did the arrangements, and um, I think I'm still dealing with that a little bit. Each day is better, yeah. but I feel pretty strongly that uh, his spirit is with me and guiding me and making things happen. It would seem to me that out of that tragedy, you decided to turn it into something good. Is, is that how you would describe your journey to fatherhood? It inspired me to take action. Um, I'd always toyed with the idea of having kids, right? And in the moment where he passed, I was like, damn, yeah, I never gave him grandkids. After a six month foster, Jason jumped at the opportunity to adopt the brothers. They call him Papa Jay. Three, two, one, family. family! Before we were living with Papa Jay, we, we always used to like hop from foster home to foster home. He's actually funny, nice, super nice actually. And like, he's just like the, like the big dad that I never actually had before. And most importantly, he loves us and we love him. What's your hope for your family going forward? I just want to see them grow up to be smart, intelligent, great black men to, to make a difference, to take their experience and use that mm. to do some amazing things. What do you think Tucker would, would say about all of this? I'm so proud. <laughs> He'd be so elated. No one in the street could tell him that those are not his grandkids <laughs> by blood. He is proud of you, so. I think so. I don't think a lot of folks are, so myself included. Thank you. According to the Department of Education, there are roughly 400,000 children in foster care. And we wanted to spotlight how one young person in foster care found their forever family. Pride is Universal is sponsored by City. Join City in supporting True Colors United's mission to prevent and end LGBTQ plus youth homelessness. All month long, we're celebrating stories of resilient individuals who are part of the LGBTQ plus community in our series, Pride is Universal. And today, we're shining a light on the struggles of youth in foster care. Yeah, according to the Administration for Children and Families, there are over 400,000 children in foster care, and studies have found that up to 30% of them identify as LBGTQ+. One of those kids was Diamond Kobolowski, and until two women stepped in to change everything. Oh, there you oh. go. There we go. There's your adoption. Adoption day. And I believe that all humans are resilient, um, but I believe that growing up in foster care, I think it gives youth a different kind of resilience that isn't one that can just be 
created. For 21-year-old Diamond Kobolinski, being a foster youth would shape a majority of their childhood experiences. When I was first placed in the foster care system, I was around the age of two, two and a half. I um, was removed um, due to child abuse and neglect. I was in foster care for 15 years. Um, in that time, I lived in about 40 placements. The years in foster care were not easy for Diamond. I think it was an experience that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. There's that internal tool of battling of like, am I good enough? Like if my own parents don't want me, you know, like, and so I think on top of that, to be, you know, a youth who identifies as LGBTQ, it, it, it's still so highly stigmatized and it did, it made finding homes difficult. There were times where, you know, I wasn't able to be me in all of my glory. Like I, I toned it back a little bit because I felt like at this point in time, I need somewhere to sleep. I need food to eat. But things would change for Diamond when they were 16 years old and Jessica and Amy Kobolinski came into their life. During our first year of marriage is when we, we were going through the process of getting licensed. We were looking at different websites that promote adoption of teenagers. We first saw Diamond, like just really just a profile online. The first time I saw it, I knew instantly that um, Diamond would be with us. I had been attending a, um, an LGBT youth organization here um, just for some support and a sense of community. Um, and Amy had been running groups um, at the organization. When Diamond walked in, <laughs> I just, I uh, leaped for joy. I just, I was just uh, bravely inspired by him. So Jessica and Amy wanted to give Diamond a forever home. I think the biggest thing for me was the fact that they were also LGBTQ. I had needed somebody who could guide me, somebody who understood, um, because that was a huge battle of mine with a lot of former families, was trying to explain who I was and how I felt. But the decision was not instantaneous for Diamond. And I took a little bit of time to think about it because I had to decide, you know, am I willing to allow someone else to take care of me? Am I willing to take that risk of being hurt again? Ultimately, Diamond chose to take the leap, and their adoption became official on October 26, 2017. On adoption day, like, I cried. We all cried, and it was because we knew that it was final. Like, we knew for better or for worse, we were stuck together, and that we had made that choice. Settling into life as a family took some time. There's this myth that when you get adopted, everything's just perfect, right? Everything just falls into place. It just was a matter of us still plugging away, trying to still make the family work. I really had to give myself permission to fully bloom. I knew that I lived in a home where I could just be myself wholeheartedly. And in a full circle moment, Diamond is now working for Kids Crossing as an executive assistant. Kids Crossing, this is Diamond Home and Director Crawl. It's the child placement agency in Colorado Springs that certified their moms as foster parents. Kids Crossing has always been so accepting and supportive. We can't really undervalue how much belonging is a part of who we are deep down inside and you need a place to be and you need a place to be yourself. And that's already a struggle for every child in foster care. And then you add the different layers of am I going to be pushed away from a place that felt pretty safe to be able to, to tell someone my story and, and they're going to reject me and I'm going to have to start over again with somebody else. In the past five years, thanks to the adoption of Diamond's little brothers, their family has gotten even bigger. I love being a big brother. You know, I tell people, like, I don't think anyone in this world loves me as much as my little brothers do. We're in this together for the good, the bad, for better or worse, and nothing can, can tear that apart. We weren't forced to love each other. Um, we choose to. Yes. We are never going to give up on Diamond. Diamond's never going to give up on us. Mm -hmm. After the break, the life-changing news I got to deliver to one couple whose journey to parenthood took an unexpected path. We'll be right back.
back to the booth with a beautiful story from our vault. This next couple always wanted to be parents and they worked for years with the Gladney Center for Adoption to make their dream come true. When I caught up with them, they thought we were just doing a sit down to talk about the long road to adoption, but they had no idea what was in store. There are certain things you talk about when you're about to get married, and one of them obviously is children. We always knew we wanted to have a family someday, but we wanted to work on us first. Yeah. We just wanted to enjoy being married. We were still young. Yeah, we were in our 20s. Okay, so you thought, let's hang and have some travel and do some fun stuff. Right. So then there comes a point, you're getting out of your 20s, and you're like, wait a minute, what about the kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then there comes a point, you're getting out of your 20s, you're thinking, well, we should start, right? So what happened? About five years ago, we said, maybe this is time to mm -hmm. start. And we hit bumps that we didn't expect to hit. What kind of bumps? We ended up going to um, an infertility doctor. And when we got the results back, it was a confirmation that we weren't going to be able to um, have children. And it was an issue. You, you were sick with cancer when you were young. Yeah. And it must have been one of those things that you thought, well, that was then. Thank God that's over. over. Right. And it ended up affecting the fertility issues. Correct. Yeah, it was a curveball that we had thought wasn't going to be there yeah. because I was six years old at the time. Right. And they just said sometimes, given the chemo, it just has those long term effects. And so it took us for a loop. You know, I remember when we first found out, and I actually felt like I wished it was me, not him because I knew it hurt him really bad. We have a really strong relationship, and so we knew that it just was going to take some time for us to get past that. It's almost like you feel like a loss in some way mm -hmm. um, when they tell you you can't do something that you wanted to do. And so we ended up um, you know, giving it some time just for us, and eventually we said, you know, I have um, both my mother and my aunt, my godmother, are um, adopted. My grandmother couldn't have children, and so I was familiar with adoption. After a while, we talked about it, and we said, you know, that was a route that we thought would be a really great way to go for us. So you fill out paperwork. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lots of paperwork, Lots of right? paperwork. And you have home visits, and there's a lot, there's a big process as this is gearing up. Did you get a time frame? Did they give you any indication? We started in November. We didn't get our approval until the following May. And so okay. this upcoming May will be um, two years two for years. us. Waiting is hard. Waiting, Isn't it? Waiting is very hard. Like, what's the hardest part of the wait? There's good days and there's bad days. Mm -hmm. There's days where you wonder how much further you can go. Mm -hmm. And Stacy, we have... We push each other through those days. Yeah. Gladney, our adoption agency, they said to us when we first went there, one of the things to remember, it's not a matter of if you're going to be parents, it's just a matter of when. <laughs> so we know that um, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen when it's meant to happen for us. Well, I think the day is today. What? What do you mean? I think you've been matched. <sighs> really? You've been Get out of here. The walk. <laughs> You've been matched. You're kidding me. You've been matched. Oh my god. And wow. it's a girl. <laughs> um, I'm so happy for you guys. Oh, this is you. this is such a cool. <laughs> You're having a baby. That's what's happening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I'm so happy for you. Oh my God. This is what. <laughs> 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 Frank and Stacy's five-year journey to parenthood culminated the following week when they met their little girl. Congratulations. Here's your daughter. Stacy and Frank became mom and dad to Addison Emily. Oh, <laughs> the little girl they've loved since forever. We just pray that she has a life filled with happiness and good health. We don't have a lot of love around her. We want to see her, you know, grow and develop and have like all these great things that hopefully we can give her over the course of her life. We're excited and ready to take her home. <laughs> 
gosh, I love looking back at that story. When we come back, one last story to boost your spirits after the break. Back here on the boost with that one last fun video of the day. Check it out. How about a live edition of Hoda's Boost today? What do you guys think about that? Okay, so here is the deal. You can't plan this. We have so many people out on the plaza who are Taylor Swift fans. Tell me, I heard about you guys, the Snyder family. Yes. Or tell me your name. I'm Violet. How old are you? Ten. And how old are you? I'm nine. And what's your name? Victor. And I hear you guys are hardcore Taylor Swift. Hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? We're givers this morning. So AMC gave us four tickets to the Eras Tour movie. <laughs> and we're going to give them to you. Wait. Come on in. Guess what? Oh These are for you. <laughs> and one for you. Oh, wait, Dad. Wait, let me not forget Dad. Hi, Dad. Hey. And guess what else? Hoda, Savannah, Carson, Al, I heard. Tell everybody what you guys are going to be for Halloween. Taylor Swift's eras. <laughs> I love that. They're going to dress up at the tour. Have the best time at the movie. She's going! That's it for today. Thank you so much as we honored so many beautiful families for National Adoption Week. We'll be back here tomorrow on Today All Day. all ghouls and gals. I'm Carson Daly here at Today, where of course we go all out for Halloween year after year and in honor of that tradition all month long here on Popstar Plus. We have been looking at our favorite costume reveals. On today's episode, we're highlighting the best of Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda Kotb's great Halloween moments. They are truly an iconic pair and their 2016 costumes took us back to the 90s and another TV duo. Take a look. I can't believe this. <laughs> Everything looks so different. I can't believe my eyes. Look, there's <laughs> even a spot there for Gelman. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why does he get a seat? He doesn't do anything. He's waiting for tea service with a butler or something. Wait, reach, reach, reach. Look, look. They have a new kind of phone. Look at Remember that. Remember that was made fun of our other phone? Now I can use my Lee Press on nails and just dial without a rotary. <laughs> Wow, that's oh, something. Wow, it's going to take me a long time to get used to all of this new Come stuff. Reach. Reach. How do I do it day Reach. after day? How was your weekend, Reach? Not good. Not good. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, no. Joy and I were in Atlantic City. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a, a lot going on, right. and it's a convoluted story. You really don't want to hear it. I don't want to get into it in too much detail. But you're never going to guess what I watched last night. What, Reese? Me and Joy in bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> we recorded this new show. Yeah? A drama. Shot right here in the streets of New York. Right and I, I got to tell you, it didn't do it for me. <gasps> oh, Reach, that's too bad. Mm. Reach, what was it called? I don't know, something like uh, legal... 
uh, order or <laughs> law and something. And I, I mean, get this. At the very beginning of the show, yeah. they play this scary sound effect. It goes, scary. Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> I nearly jumped out of my shorts <laughs> when I heard it. Anyway, you got to hear it. You got to hear it. So look, I brought it. Where is it? Where I brought it. Uh, there it is. I brought it in so you could to share it with you because uh, you know how I feel about you. Okay. <laughs> Reach. All right. Del Monster, can you pretend that you actually work around here? Come here. Take this tape. Do something with it, all right? Get Come over on, here. Gilman. Send it to the control room. See if they can play the sound. And please, please, <laughs> Gelman, be careful with it. I keep lending these tapes out to everybody, and nobody ever gives it back to me. You got something to say? I'm right on top of it, Ridge. <laughs> Don't you worry. No, I won't worry. I'm never going to see that tape again, am I? Never going to see it again. I'm not the screw up you think I am, oh, Ridge. Yeah. Oh, Gelman, thank you. I did did I ask? tell you that Cassidy did a poo poo in oh, my body? Yeah. No, all by herself. I've got pictures. Where are they? No Where pictures of the poo poo. Wait, where's my Wait, they're in my fanny pack. Hold on. I've got them right here. Look, look. Oh. Oh, oh cool. I have some pictures to show you, too, OK? okay. Look, Reach. I don't care. <laughs> OK. Right. I'm bored already. You know what's going to help me wake up? What? That horrible sound from legal something. I will never be able to get it out of my head. Reach, Reach. It's law and order. Is it queued up yet, Gelman? In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups the police who investigate crime, and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These where's are their the, stories. Where's the dada? Oh, oh, I'm jumping out of my shorts. That was beautiful. Wait a Rich. minute. There must be a problem in the control room. Right, Gelman? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 listen, it's ready for the listening. Are you ready to wear it? Are you I need to hear it. <laughs> or something. Never forget, mind. forget about it. Never forget about mind, Gelman. Forget about it. It. It's never going to make it another season, anyhow, that show. <laughs> How about we go through the papers, all okay, right? Yeah. That's what I do. Okay. The business section. Yeah. What, what reads? What some, is it? Some, some show, some, uh, some company called Stop Touching Me. <laughs> Microsoft plans to rescue their nemesis, Apple. That's a fruit, not a company. <laughs> and they're from the brink of bankruptcy with a $150 million investment. Gee, Reg, I don't know. It sounds like a waste of money to me. I don't see how a company like that will ever be able to recover. What else, what else is in the papers, Reg? I don't know. Mm. Talk about a company that's doomed to fail. Get this one. What about this group Wait. that wants to create a magic blue pill that helps men dip? I can't say that. Wait, Reed, you mean Viagra. Stop it. Don't Reed, say the word. Reed, you don't ever have to worry about that. You're so strong and sexy. You got that right. I got the strength of 10 men. Reed. Reed. What? Oh, you're so, Reed, you're spitting. You got to you spit when you talk, Reed. He's not when he talks spitting. <laughs> He is. You know what? She says that and there's nothing coming out, right? You see anything coming out? You're crazy, Gelman. <laughs> write this down. Write this down. She was complaining about my cold hands yesterday, and today she says I'm spitting. spitting. I'm sick of it. He's spitting. I, Rage, I still love you. Of course you do. Everybody loves Rages. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right in the middle of hearing myself talk, and that stupid sound goes off. What is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> This is your line, Gelman. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It was my pager. I just got it. Isn't it cute? I love it. Promise no. it won't go off again, would you? Reach. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. Wait a minute. You know what? You know what it's time for, everybody? Are you ready? Tell the freeze over. Okay. It's time that we're going to do an audience giveaway. So we're going to pick a number between 1 and 4,227. What number, Reed? I'm going to pick the number three. Why? Which is the number of my favorite player from Notre Dame. Oh, excellent number. Oh, I just love that Joe Montana. I'll play ball with him anytime. Yeah. Congrats to our audience winner. Guess what you win? You win a copy of my workout tape. It's called oh, Feel Fit and Fabulous. Congratulations to the winner. Yay! Oh. This is so fun. Oh, that was Glad fun. He's having fun. <laughs> How was that? Well, that was fun, right? Can we, come here. Regis Philbin, everybody. Come on up. Come on. Nice job.
Duh. The legend. How was, how, was it, how was it playing? We are so confused up we here. We don't even we know who. Honestly. I'll start saying, I call her Cap. I'm Cap. Gelman. Gelman. We're going to the future, are we? this? All right, that was hilarious. They absolutely nailed those looks. So good to see the great Regis in there, too. And during the show, entertainment journalist Brian Balthazar joined Kathleen Hoda and Regis to dish about other celebrity costumes from stars like Kelly Clarkson and comedian Amy Schumer. Take a look. Reach here with the scoop from PopGoesTheWeek.com is the one, the only Brian Balthazar. And of course, Gelman is sticking around. We don't know why. He never does anything. He doesn't know either. <laughs> what does he leave? Uh, he's spending well, the rest of the can show. Can we with... talk about Brian's costume? I wanted to go Brian. to the one thing that holds your attention, right? <laughs> the bottle of Merlot. Are you, I, would, I did didn't you, have a Chardonnay costume. Did you make this? Uh, no, I adapted it because the label that it came with was a little raunchy. It was not good for daytime, so, so I made this. Up. Right. All right, so a lot of celebs are, are dressing up for Halloween. Would you go through some of the fun it's costumes? It's true. You know, we all love Bette Midler any day of the week, but she had a fundraiser for a New York organization and she showed up as Winifred from Hocus Pocus. Do you remember this? Look at her. She looks she exactly like she, did, yeah, she had the wig <laughs> right there. Um, uh, and so this is her in the 1993 movie Hocus Pocus, but she actually came back to perform as this character. And this movie has got a little bit of a cult following because yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker is in it. Kathy and Jimmy is in it. And even Bette herself said as recently as last week, she doesn't know why there hasn't been a sequel because you don't see women doing slapstick that much in film and they clearly had well, a blast. She's going to be a little busy with Hello Doll. She <laughs> is. She can do anything. Bette can do whatever she wants. <laughs> okay, Amy Schumer and Ben Hanish. Now, I know you, you probably, oh I don't know God. if you watch Stranger Things, but everyone knows someone who had a friend in, in, in costume as something from Stranger Things. things. And uh, Amy, Amy was no different. She went as uh, Dustin, and her boyfriend Ben, who has a shaved head, went as Eleven. Eleven is that's Ben on the right because she's a little girl with a shaved head. It's a long story, popular we costume. I have no idea what Stranger Things <laughs> I know, is. I know, I kind of had a feeling we this would stranger. happen. Yeah, okay. this is Stranger Things. <laughs> but they look fun, and they, they they had fun. So next up, though, I, you you heard Kelly Clarkson. Who can belt out a song better than anybody? Love her. She's had a Except couple of songs. Except for that Kathy Lee. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you know, Thank that's you, true. Thank you, Reese. You're welcome. <laughs> so, I, I call them as I see them. A oh woman can God. sing. <gasps> so, so Kelly Clarkson did a little tribute to Sia. She sang Chandelier. Sia's actually written a couple one, songs for two, Kelly Clarkson. So it? this is Kelly one, Clarkson. Let's take a listen. One, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. Throw them back till I lose count. I God, she's good. Kelly Clarkson. From the she is so Kathy good. Kathy Lee's better than that. Yeah. Show, show them, Kathy Lee. Sing. Um, how does the carnival thing go? If you could see, see me, me now, now out on the friendship cruise. Yes, and we're eating tasty food and drinking what Not we choose. Uh, or <laughs> something like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so she was wearing the Sia wig. If your bangs were a little longer, you could sport it. So Sia doesn't actually see when she performs. Kelly right. Clarkson said it was like being in your own little world when you're performing, which is kind of an interesting thing, but a little disarming at mm -hmm. first. Would you please move on to something we find interesting? <laughs> okay, well, that's a compliment. <laughs> Katy Perry. Katy Perry wowed everyone. She donned prosthetics and a red power suit and went as uh, Hillary Clinton, yeah. which I think you talked about a little earlier. Had a friend with her as uh, Bill Clinton and Who's a security detail. Orlando, Orlando Bloom, Bloom I no, Orlando Bloom was there, but that's not Orlando. That was another friend. Orlando oh. went in a different direction. Oh. Uh, but the very next and we night... we don't judge. That's, we no, don't, we don't, don't judge. No, you, not, not a day People of goodbye. go any direction <laughs> they want, right, Gelman? <laughs> I'm like, but me, that's me. Yeah. Yes, yes, right. When we come back, we're going to revisit Kathy Lee and Hoda's country themed costumes with a special guest you're not going to want to miss. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Every year, we put our best foot forward for our Halloween theme. In 2017, it was no different with star-studded country music costumes. I rocked a fierce mullet, dressing up as the one and only Billy Ray Cyrus. That was a lot of fun. Al dressed up as the iconic Willie Nelson. Hoda went as one of my buddies, Blake Shelton. And then last but not least, Kathy Lee Gifford dressed as Miley Cyrus. After Kathy Lee and Hoda got their country on, they sat down with the real Billy Ray to discuss his long career. Take a look. Some people know my daddy for his multi-platinum records, his numerous music awards, or his oh-so-famous hair. But to me, he'll always be daddy. And of course, we're talking about Billy, Billy Ray, Ray Cyrus. Cyrus. 25 years <laughs> after his debut album. Billy Ray is busier than ever. He's appearing on the current season of The Voice and is as an advisor on Team Miley, of course. of course. Plus, he is gearing up for a new album. He's dropping November 10th. Y'all write it down. It's called Set, Set the, the Record, record straight. straight. And let me tell you something. My daddy's keeping me warm just like he did when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Getting weirder. <laughs> All right. Hi, Billy Ray. How are you? I'm doing great. So this new record drops. Are you, are you excited about it? Real excited. It comes out November 10th. Yeah. You can pre-order now. And um, Miley's on the album, a great song called Stand. It's yeah. about standing for what you believe in. Be and the Noah, too, right? is this Noah is on uh, uh, Don Williams' classic Tulsa Time. We made a dance mix of now, it. And, what's this cool. one right here? Yeah. That's Tulsa Time. Yeah. That is Oh, a dance yeah. I love that. Yeah, so that what, what that's me it? and Noah. What was it like singing with Noah? What was well, that she's like? She's awesome. Is she? Her instinct, she's she's right on. She's got her own We've feelings had her on our about show. things. She's, 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 she's her. really, really loving right now being with Katy Perry. As a matter of fact, she brought me on stage here at Madison Square Garden. Oh, my word. She's opening with Katy Perry. But if you've not seen the show, it's a really great, great show. Katy Perry's fabulous. She is a great uh, She's a great performer. entertainer. Great mm -hmm. entertainer. Billy Ray, whenever you walk into, whether it's out here on the plaza or on stage at the garden or wherever it is, everyone just feels happy. Like there's something about seeing Well, everybody you. has an achy, yeah. breaky heart. That's right. Yeah. And you well, make them feel better. You have, stay, you have staying <laughs> power and that's something to be said in this business, isn't it? It's, you know, you always got to reinvent, you know, yeah. and, I, and you got to love what you do and do it because you love it. And yeah. reinvention, looking for, I love music. That's my passion, the kids' passion. We love making new music. And I love acting too, you know, so just kind of living the best of both worlds and, and in a really great spot right now to be creative. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a killer band, yeah. like the best band. I, I've loved touring so much this year. And uh, because my band is so awesome. They're yeah. so supportive. They're just so great. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, writing a lot of songs, recording, and just staying really busy creatively. How was Carson? How did you think, Carson, y'all, I don't know if you know, we dressed up as Billy Ray. How did you think he did? Give us the, the, the Hello, Dan. Well, I'll, one. I'll use, plug the album again. I got a new song on the album called I Want My Mullet Back. <laughs> and um, Carson was wearing it. You know, that's what you do with a mullet. You rock that thing out there. You, you gotta act like it's supposed to be there. Yeah, it's a simpler time. When you think about mullets, you think about fuzzy dice, ZZ Top, <laughs> Linen yeah, Spinner, yeah. Skinny Dippin', and um, life was a little less complex with a mullet. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about getting my back. Are you yeah. really? Well, what is I'm your writing and singing about it, so yeah. I might as well do it. Why yeah. not? What is your biggest <laughs> challenge right now? Personal um, challenge. Personal challenge, just to um, be happy. You yeah. know, just that's it. Just make sure everybody's good. Everybody be happy and count my blessings every day. I believe in waking up and thanking God for the light and, and pray for the wisdom and vision to do the things on this earth that we're all put here to do. Yeah. You know, Amen. I think. A, guys, just don't forget, Puerto Rico really needs yeah. help right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, that, there's something I'd really like to do. Puerto Rico is getting lost in the yes. shuffle of yeah. so many of the tragedies. So um, just praying for wisdom yeah. to do, you know, the things I'm put here to do and for yeah. all of us to do that. Well, well, there's one more. Preach it, Daddy. Always good to hear from Billy Ray Cyrus. All right, coming up next, Haunted House hijinks. Kathy Lee and Hoda sent Jenna Chanel and Dylan to a haunted house for a scary good time. Take a look. <laughs> All right, so this year our producers asked us to go to a haunted house and we both said, hell, hell no. no. <laughs> so instead we called in a few superheroes who we happen to know who were up for the job. First up for the job, the Jenna. one, the only, Jenna Bush Hager. Come on down, Jenna. Save some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait go, go again, go again. We need the wait, win. Oh, we need the win. win. Wait, okay. Jenna Bush Hager. Beyonce. I don't know. I know. You bet you are. All right, and gorgeous. Finally, Dylan. Dylan. 
Ben Dreyer! Yes. Oh! Oh, get low! Oh. I don't know what else to do. This is my move. That's your move? Yeah, come over yes. there. Okay, okay, so ladies. You guys are the cutest. Okay, wait, we first feel of all, uncomfortable. We sort of like dressing up as a boy. Wow. That's you know, what I said. Wow. Hager's got some fleas <laughs> happening. No, that's what, Wonder Woman. Oh, I'm Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. So did y'all pick your own? Any, is, you no, got we were told what to dress up as. And honestly, this really has nothing to do with our spot. We just wanted no. to be super. Well, we yeah. really wanted to or dress up today. to dress up like this, and we said yes. Okay. You should exactly. stay in it all It was this or rock, paper, scissors, and we decided to do this. Y'all look so cute. Go out with the babies tonight. Not like this. No, no, no. I can't. I have no peripheral vision. How am I cry? No babies in nine months. You know? All right. All right. So what did you guys do? Okay. What did we do? Okay. So here's the thing. I don't think we were nearly as brave then as we look now. You know, we gave it our best shot. Yeah. There's a lot of hand holding, a lot of screaming. Yeah. Because they don't call it blood manor for nothing. I even have a scab. Take a look. Gross. I'm shaking. I'm like, a little I'm, nervous. I'm, I'm, I have a cold sweat going on. I've yeah. got a warm this, sweat going on. I don't on. trust this I'm thing. trying to like... Ah, I don't really want to do this. Me neither. I don't either. <laughs> I don't want anybody to jump out. Leave us alone. Ah! Get me now. Wait, I don't like this. I don't want to go home. My mouth is so dry. I want to go home. Wait, there's feet. There's feet. Ah! Oh, God. There's an exit. Ready? We're gonna run. Okay. You ready? Wait. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Get back! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Boy, this is hard. I don't wanna be here. No, no, no. We can okay. go. Oh, that's a creepy dude. Oh god! You said you guys were gonna die. Oh god! Okay. Ready? Go! 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 Lee's special stuff. I yeah. fell off the wrecking ball at one point, too. <laughs> you did. I <laughs> did. It was worth it. <laughs> Great spot, you guys. Y'all, that was Great. so much At least we got to do it together. Are there any words or just screaming? No, it was just screaming. Come on, girl. She was, she was the leader, for sure. sure. Now that takes a lot of bravery. When we come back, more of the best of Kathy Lee and Hoda Halloween. Stay with us.
Welcome back. In 2018, we took it back to the decade of decadence. That is the 1980s, of course, and our looks, I don't think, disappointed. Kathy Lee dressed as everybody's favorite material girl, Madonna. Hoda sported her best flashy fit dressed up as none other than the great Elton John. That was here in Studio 1A, and in the spirit of Halloween, it's contagious. Even the guests that come to the show love to get in on all the fun. In fact, that year, Hoda and Kathy Lee caught up with Carla Gugino and Michelle Hoosman, stars of Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House, to talk about the terrifying series. What makes you frightened, like you can't fall asleep at night kind of frightened? Well, for a lot of folks, it's the Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House. Terrifying new show focuses on five siblings who grew up in the most famous haunted house in America. Now, ad as adults, they're reunited and they're forced to face their ghosts the, of their past to literally do that. Yeah. Two of the show's stars are with us this morning and they came to play. Yeah. Carla G G uh, Gugino and Mick. Gil yeah. Houseman. Houseman. <laughs> did I get it right? You did. Oh, gosh, great. I'm so sorry. Way, it's a mouthful. Can we just, can we just say names? thank you because you came dressed. Yes. Sometimes on Halloween, people come and it's awkward because here we <laughs> here are. Here we are. There they are. Yes. We thought you, you, I mean, look at you guys. How did you, you pick guys. your outfits? You know, I'm a huge Bob Fosse fan. Yeah. Uh, um, uh -huh. All That Jazz is my number one favorite movie, yeah. but I love Cabaret. And we were kind of talking about what would be fun that we could do together we as a duo? Well, this was going to be fun. By the way, it's perfect. Yeah, we needed to sex perfect. it up a little. Yes. yes. <laughs> and you got, look at the boots this woman's wearing. Uh, so tell us, we were asking a little bit when, before we started. Uh, this thing has become like a phenomenon. Nothing prepares you really for that. You're just there to do a job, right, when you start out. Yeah, no, I mean, I think what, what's... I had worked with Mike Flanagan before on something called Gerald's Game, and he really had such a clear vision. He's of what the director? The director, and, and also um, basically an edits it, and it is his, yeah, his sort of vision. And um, he had a really clear sense of what he wanted to do and the depth that he wanted to go. So I knew it would be really good, but, but what's amazing is that it has been embraced so hugely, and yeah. people are so taken Here's to it. Here's what's weird. You, there are so many scary things on TV that you can are. find. Why do you guys Including think? Our show. Yeah, right <laughs> now. <laughs> but why do you think this thing yeah, captivated what, people? Yeah. Well, I think the combination of our show, it being a horror show, but at yeah. the same time, a, a family drama. I think that is what's yeah. new about it, and that's yeah. what's really uh, gripping people. Don't I you mean, think? people seem to, it's it's a very rare combo mm. where people are truly terrified, and by the end of the show, mm. by the end of the season, people are crying. Yes. You know, but they're terrified as well. We hear all kinds of reports that people can't sleep. People really can't they're, sleep. They're, they're, they're it's a real really thing. having a horrible time <laughs> I dealing know, with this. I know. A friend of mine said for three nights in a row she's been sleeping with the lights on. Well, now <laughs> I said I think thank you. I'm not sure. I, I think so. It didn't have that effect on the two of you. You know, you're you're in the you're working, it, but but well, was there anything about it that was frightening to you? Well, the, the reading the script for the first time always scared me a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but then when, once you're shooting, the process is, is it can be pretty tedious and, and slow. technical. And so by the time yeah. we watch it, it you know, I, I didn't, I never expected this response, and I'm I'm thrilled. Yeah, by it's it. it's really. I, I knew it would be really great, and then you never know though if people will find How it. How will be received? So you know, what was amazing was we shot for eight months. So to keep this particular material bubbling on the back burner for That's eight months yeah. and the character that I played, I mean, all of us, it was really, that was really intense uh, in a really interesting way. Well, we want to just say congrats because it's yeah. hard to have a hit these days and you guys have one. That's major, awesome. Major, major. Right. And thanks for dressing up. <laughs> Y'all are so cute. The Haunting of Hill House is streaming right now on Netflix. But finish our show first and then you can watch. Yes, please. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us. It's been awesome to look back at Kathy Lee and Hoda's most spooktacular Halloween moments from Hoda as Kathy and Kathy as Regis to Billy Ray Cyrus's Halloween catch up. There's nothing like Kathy Lee and Hoda on Halloween. When we come back next week to check out more of the best of Halloween moments, we'll see you then.
question. Do you have somewhere between two and ten random pumpkins laying around your house right now? I have two. Well, okay, do not throw them away. Cook with them instead. Here to show us how to make oh. a delicious roast pumpkin ramen. Doesn't that sound incredible? Sounds yummy. The author of Mission Vegan, Danny Bowen. Hi, Danny. Danny. Hey, good morning. How are okay, you? So pumpkin good to see you. Like something to, I feel like either you make pumpkin pie or you throw it away. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, you know, but. I love this trick. Is like This is the easiest dish. I love making this at home for my son. Okay. You know, it's a good way to get him to eat pumpkin that's not just pumpkin pie. Okay. And where it is that you like pumpkin seeds. I love pumpkin, you love pumpkin seeds. seeds. Okay. Yes. So I want to show you a trick tip. with how to <laughs> clean to get the, get the seeds out. This is a smaller pumpkin. Yeah, it's like it's a, a kabocha. Guy. Is that one that you cook like? Can you cook with all pumpkins? You can cook with most any pumpkin. Okay. Any yeah. like decorative gourd, you can okay. cook with it. Okay. Long, okay. Just depends on how long it's been sitting out. Good. You know, yeah. cut when it they, when they're caved in. Don't. Yeah. No. Yeah. When you but Moldy. when you cut it in half, you'll see these seeds here. A quick good trick to get the seeds out is to kind of like kind of make an outline around where it is here, and then just use a spoon and scoop them right out. Right. That's easier than I thought right? it was. So you're uh -huh. going to scoop all the seeds out. And of get this. all that hair and all yeah, that all the business. Things. Okay. And, and, then the, and then so from here what we're going to do is mm -hmm. we're going to season this. So I'd like to do yeah. a little bit of olive oil. Uh -huh. And this no, is a good By the way, it smells amazing in here. It does. Thank you. This is a great trick for roasting pumpkin. Season it with a little bit of olive oil and salt and then leave it, leave the skin on it. That's going to create a little jacket in the oven and it's going to steam inside of this, oh, right? Oh, so you just steam it in the oven for how long? So I have 375 about 45 minutes. And you paint until it with it's that. like just tender. Okay. Ooh, and then look at this thing. I mean, I thought that was <laughs> dough earlier. Really what happens is it steams in this jacket and it becomes like a custard. Feel how soft that is? Oh my is? gosh. And this recipe is amazing because what I do is yeah. I get a little bit of olive oil and garlic, mm -hmm. get it really nice and soft, and like get it fragrant. And do you throw, throw this it right in, in there? The with skin the on skin? this one, yeah. The skin on this pumpkin. Do you break it up or yeah? Just go ahead, break it up there. Oh my yeah. gosh, that is smelling. Oh. Okay. So this is the base for our ramen, and this is going to create much like this is actually um, a lot of ramen have a lot of viscosity from a lot of bones and like yeah. this is all vegan, so the the pumpkin is going to give a lot of body okay. flavor. So okay. that's all done. You season that. This is a little bit of mushroom seasoning or like a soup bouillon. If you have like oh. instant ramen, if okay. you have an instant ramen packet, you can throw that in there. Okay. A little that's bit of that, a little salt. bit of salt, okay. a little bit of soy sauce, soy, okay. and yeah. then water. You want to cover this with oh. water. Let that okay. just so that it kind of cook boils. away. Yeah. Look at that. And this can then once this comes to a boil. You know, let it simmer for about five minutes. And it's then good take to go. it off. That's okay. it. So I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite chili pastes. Uh, right now, at the farmer's market, there's really amazing chilies still. Um, these have just been roasted. Are these spicy? Some of them are spicy. Okay. Do you like spicy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, a kind of a maybe sure. Do you take the seeds out or you leave them all in? I like, what I do is I roast them and sound the same as the pumpkin. Olive oil, salt, roast them but until they're soft and then throw them under the char uh, and get them kind of burned, boiled up. So, then, so all the seeds, all the hot stuff stays everything in. Everything stays in. A little bit of vinegar. Mm -hmm. When you cook for your son, do you take some of the seeds out or no? So when my son, when I cook for my son, I I, I give him a little bit. You yeah, know, I, I like to like, he likes to like experiment introduce. with How old is he? He's almost nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm coming over to eat. I have a nine-year-old yeah. too. So this will go in there. You blend that till it's soft. Okay. And so for the actual ramen, really, really simple. You get it like this is our broth. It's Gosh. been cooked. Mm -hmm. You add some noodles in here. You add some spinach or some greens. Mm -hmm. Once the noodles are cooked and the greens oh have gosh. wilted, it looks so like this. Spicy. Do you want a little bit of spice or any spice or no? I think they did. They put spice in. No. I put. I didn't put any yet. But I, here's extra pumpkin seeds if you like. Mm. If you have pumpkin mm. seed oil, you can put pumpkin seed oil on there. If not, olive oil. Oh my god, that Isn't is great. Danny, that's so yummy. I get why your yummy. kids would love this. I'm yeah. gonna take some home. Oh my god, that's so oh good. Gosh. And get spinach too. Yeah, yeah delicious. I love it. Thank you, Danny, and mm -hmm. for this recipe and more go today.com slash food. It is Superfood Friday, and this morning we're going all in on fall. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is here to serve up two must-haves for the season. Good morning. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. Oh, my gosh. I have two fabulous fall recipes, and these are things that typically we get out in restaurants, so I'm excited to show you how simple they are. Oh, and we're starting with a hearty harvest bowl. What goes and into a it as a base? Five steps here. The first step is a leafy green base. Mm -hmm. Next, and it could be any kind of leafy greens, any mescaline mix or arugula or kale or spinach, they're all good for you. And next we have our grains. So I'm putting in quinoa, but you can use wild or brown rice. Um, you could use whole grain noodles. Anything goes because you know you are the boss of your bowl. <laughs> next, it's all about the roasted vegetables. So I did some seasonal picks. I have sweet potato, Brussels, and um, red onion. Ooh. But broccoli florets can go in there, Kali. And what's um, your, your really trick to roasting them? High heat, 425 for about 25 minutes. And all I do is I mix them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, mm -hmm. salt, and pepper. And sometimes fresh thyme because, you know, you really want to feel those fall flavors. Mm -hmm. And next the is the 
Yeah, so I'm, again, sticking with the season. I have sliced apples. Sometimes I do pear. If you don't want to slice, you can chop. It's a little bit easier to eat. Or you could throw in some raisins or even, um, like, dried cranberries. And, of course, the protein. So here I'm doing grilled chicken, mm-hmm. but this could also be salmon. It could be sliced eggs. Um, you could do lentils, shrimp, anything goes. And a little bit of garnish, you know, again, seasonal, some pumpkin seeds. I have here almonds, pomegranate seeds. Wow. And um, on Instagram and on today.com, I gave a recipe for a light balsamic vinaigrette and a lemon vinaigrette that Ooh. you could pour oh. over it. But again, so easy. I'm just going to hold so this up before. Because it checks off all the boxes yeah. of things you'd want to eat. Yeah. Yum. It's your your yes. food pyramid it's in a bowl. Beautiful and hearty and yeah. nourishing. Okay. The best of it. everything. Yeah. All right. Now this is, I hear, is this your favorite? Well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm dead set <laughs> against the pumpkin spice. Uh, but Joy's got <laughs> something, a latte that actually has pumpkin in it, which is my big complaint. There's never really any pumpkin. Joy saves the day. <laughs> Al, I'm like hoping I'm on a mission to make a PSL lover out of you. So here's the thing. Like, if you're like me and so many people just become obsessed during October with these pumpkin spice lattes, instead of getting them out most days during October, mm-hmm. if you end up making this version I'm going to show you, at the end of the month, you're going to save about $100 and 4,000 calories. Wow. I mean, that's pretty huge. Okay. And it's easy. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting with just three quarter cup of milk. I have almond milk here, but this works with cow's milk. It works with soy milk, Mm -hmm. coconut milk, any milk goes. Here's the real pumpkin. It's canned pumpkin puree. Uh And I'm just adding in two tablespoons. Whoops, this is my vanilla extract. Almost had a little, whoa, (laughs) crash. It's a vanilla extract. It looks good Um, though. Here's a little bit of maple syrup Mm -hmm. and my pumpkin pie spice. Now, let mm. me show you on the stove. We're just going to simmer this up. Right. Going to grab, going to make the whole thing. Simmer it up. It's going to look like this. It comes together very quickly. And you pour it into your mm. mug. Mm. And I'm going to add either one ounce of espresso or I'm putting brewed coffee in just a quarter of a cup. Mm. Wow. And because... Everything's better with a little bit of whipped cream, oh, guys. Of course I'm it give is. It a there shot. you go. You know what? I yeah. think you're right, I would, Al. I would, I would give that yeah. a shot. I, would, I really yeah, love that. To try that. Joy, thank you so Joy, much. That looks great. We're going to try that. Can't yeah. wait. And again, mm. for these recipes, you can always head to today.com <laughs> slash food. That looks yummy. <laughs> Because somebody who's with us, we have not seen in person in such a long time. You're sure to show us one of his favorite one pot recipes straight from his new cookbook. It is the Emmy winning host, Danny CO, author of Naturally Delicious Dinners. Do you get the theme over here? Yeah, pumpkin. We're with you. pumpkin yeah. is the hero ingredient here, okay. and it's so easy. And what okay. you want to start with, it's a pumpkin mac and cheese. This is basically a pumpkin spice mac and Wait, cheese. Wait, we, we didn't get your true opinion on the, on the mac and cheese with the raisins. We'll get to that at the end. We're going to talk about the end. <laughs> 
because I have an opinion about that. But what we want to start with, guys, this is a roux, okay? okay. Do you know what a roux yes. is? It's of just course, butter and Orleans. flour. You yeah. want to mix them together because you don't want to have raw flour in there. But a roux is a thickening agent, and yeah. there's three different stages of color when you cook a roux. Mm -hmm. When you cook it for a little bit of time, it's a white stage. Yeah. It's called a bechamel. And yeah. then it gets darker and darker. The longer you cook it, the less of a thickening agent it is. Yeah. For a mac and cheese, you want it thick. So you want to just cook it for a second? A little bit. Look, look at the swap out right here. It's just this beautiful is that white. Kind of creamy foamy. color right here. Okay. So very important step to do this. And then the next step in a mac and cheese, by the way, you can make this actually gluten-free and dairy-free too. Oh. Oh, that's cheese. good. So okay. instead of it's, you could use like a, a vegan um, butter instead, yeah. and then like an unsweetened. Yeah, you have to make sure it's unsweetened. Milk. If you use okay. a vanilla almond milk, it's not going to taste. We're going to add a little bit of just warm milk. What you don't want to use whole milk, just regular whole milk. Okay, and, and just cheddar, cheddar cheese, and we're going to stir this together. Mm, make that cheddar sauce. And, and get this all to melt and have it okay. be really good. Do you want to add some salt? Sure. There you go. Excuse Here's me, some salt right to here. That is nutmeg. Is so right? what we're going to do is you want to use fresh. Nutmeg, if you okay. can. This makes Maybe it like pumpkin it. spice, kind mm -hmm. of. This this is the big difference because it's such an easy dish. This is where a spice actually makes a huge yeah. difference, and just a little bit of a fresh little. nutmeg. How do you know when you have enough? Just a, a little bit, just a, a little. I a would splash. say ten seconds. Ten seconds. Yeah, but you can smell it already. And then right. is this like the, the this is can the, pumpkin? Yeah, pumpkin puree. The, one whole can of pumpkin puree. Libby's okay. is my favorite. Goes right into mm -hmm. this one, and that's it. I love to use the whole can because what do you do with like? I know. Okay. The laughter. Oh, and then now we have what? one more ingredient. <gasps> we no, have, you did not. We have raisins. No, you no. did not. And then this goes into the trash. <laughs> Adding raisins. Danny, I knew you were my favorite. Thank you. Adding raisins, what? That was the most horrific thing that I've seen. It was. <laughs> it's like, why not? Let's add whipped cream to it while we're at it. <laughs> on TikTok does not mean we have to do it, right? Just because it's never been done doesn't mean it needs to be done. Well, just because it's going viral on TikTok doesn't mean we, we need to do it. It makes you sick. Like, here's, right. my, here's some chocolate dipped, you know, pickles. Yeah. <laughs> all right. uh, now we add our, our cooked macaroni. And what okay. I love about this, you can use a gluten-free pasta. Do you cook it al dente? You Nobody want, likes al dente, Well, you Danny. want to because you cook it here. You, you cook it al dente because you're going to bake it. Everybody, for, says, uh, oh, everybody says that, but don't you hate yes, pasta Yes, but if you're cooking it twice, you want to Start hard <laughs> to make soft. You don't want the pasta to fall apart. Thank you, Danny. And we choose Danny something and I like, are on the same page we, today. We choose like a macaroni. We choose something that has some texture to it. So like it holds that. onto the I sauce. Like this is like a oh, we only have a couple of seconds. Oh, what? Let's eat. Okay, I'm gonna pour it into the cast iron. And over here, you can here, do it in a big mm -hmm. cast iron pan, mm -hmm. or yeah, you can do it in little mugs, just like that. These are cute. I these like little the guys. mugs. Me too. Mm. How is it? Yummy. Mm-hmm. Listen, this has just enough flavor. To feel festive. And you taste the pumpkin. The, I picked this but over the raisin. Sweet. It's mm -hmm. not sweet. It's, it has like a nice earthy texture to it, a little sweetness. This savory. is delicious. Danny, you're the Double best. Double it, triple it. Danny, it's so good to see Danny, you, honey. We love see you. you. Come back and see us soon uh, for these recipes. Head to today.com. <laughs>
This is chef and TV host Elena Besser. She has not one, but two desserts two. that we can make ahead of time. Elena, good morning. Good morning. You. Good morning. Good morning. Always good morning. great to be with Pumpkin you. Pumpkin mini cheesecakes. You know it. Yum. It's always fun when you have an individual dessert portion, and mini versions sure. of desserts just bring me so much joy. So we are changing up the traditional graham cracker crust, and we are using ginger snaps to add that autumnal flair. So we have some okay. brown sugar. We've got our ginger snap cookies, and we are going to pulse this on up in a food processor. Ooh, can I until, pulse? I love to yes, pulse. Yes, please do. Just what do you got, the, what do you got the over there? What is that, butter? Yes, and we've got some melted butter. Feel free to get after that. And then, oh, once it is all night, keep on going. Yeah. Ooh. And once it is fully the consistency of sand, okay. you're going to stream in. Greg's really having a good time. You're oh. doing great. You're oh, going to so, stream so. in that melted No, you're doing Keep going, Greg. Keep going. Stream in that melted butter. And it's going to end up looking like wet sand. Then you oh, push yeah. it into the little rim. <laughs> exactly. And you take a glass oh, and press it down to create this little crust. Chanel, if you Honestly, want to try it. Honestly, I could out, just eat can. this by itself. I thought that was brown sugar. <laughs> it, it's a little brown sugar it's like brown plus sugar. ginger snacks. Oh, that's, yeah. that's good. Right, right? Oh. This is by itself. Right? right, so you do that. And so you do that. You pop that into the oven for about 10 minutes to set. And then we're going to start on our filling. So okay. we have cream cheese, we have brown sugar, we've got white sugar in here. And we are Other going. Side. Yeah, I keep doing that. I know, it's KitchenAid, Elena. It's a KitchenAid. Yeah, I love KitchenAid. They're the best. <laughs> um, and we're going to whip this on up. Then we're adding in all of our other flavorings. So we've Great. got the cinnamon. Eggs going. We've got flavor. our eggs. There we go. Warm we have, oh, ooh, one wow. hand. Hey. 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 One more. Let's go. Wow. Hey. Hey. Look One at this more. executive chef right here. There we go. Oh, man, oh, man. My kitchen at home. Look at that. Skills. I love it. And then we're adding a little bit of kosher salt. We're adding in some vanilla extract. And this wouldn't be a pumpkin cheesecake unless we had our pumpkin puree. So you True. could also swap out sweet potato if you want. You pop that in here. You end up having this delicious mixture. Yum. Wait, where do you get that? Is that in a can? Yeah, you can get it in a can. Okay. It, let's save the time. You know? okay. I know, I know. And then we are pouring it in into all of our ramekins. It's a nice, thick, delicious batter. Sam, who doesn't love a good ramekin? No. Well, Pop that in, and then we are going to sure. bake it in the oven. And this is the fun, is really awesome. chef-y mm. moment here. Okay. And this is what's going to give us that luxurious, creamy texture. We are going to add in water wow. to the bottom. This creates a water bath. So what happens is, instead of that cheesecake cooking too quickly, it's going to slowly poach it. So you get that really delicious, ah. creamy texture. I gotta get your and, but wait. Wait, there's more. There's Wait, more. there's more. We oh, we're going to start eating. Have some so bread. Please start eating it. We have some brown sugar oh and gosh. butter. We've got pumpkin seeds. We have mm. pecans oh or God. pecans, Ooh, however you say it. it. And Gosh. a little bit of salt. Mix it up. We're making Girl. a brittle. Oh, my. We that's have really this that brittle. Ridiculous. And we're topping it with... Oh. Um, some whipped cream that is sweetened with maple syrup. I wasn't expecting this. The fall flavor. It's Isn't so this soft. Good? Yeah, Here's it's the a thing. Pump, it's Each like a layer butter. is yummy on its own. Like oh, even yummy. that right there is yummy. Oh, like, I'm so. And it's fun to just snack on the brittle because it that's comes what in I mean. these nice. Wait, we didn't talk about the crumble. Oh, we have to talk about the crumble. Okay. Okay. So crumble is such an easy dessert that you can make really far in advance. You can make all of these in advance, by the way. Mm. This you can store in the fridge for up Gosh. to a week, unmold and serve it. And then with the crumble, you could make this oh, and freeze it, wrap it on up. This is cranberry and apple crumble. Uh, oh you bake gosh. it in the oven, let it cool completely, wrap it up, put it in your freezer, and then right before mm. you're serving, pop it into the oven at 350 degrees. You're going to put tin foil over it, pour some melted butter over it oh to God. reheat it, Whoa. and then serve it a la mode because always ice cream. Mm. Is there some lemon something in here? Or what's there's going some on? lemon, there's a little orange. If orange isn't your thing, you can just omit the orange. Um, oh, this is but great. I'm happy you guys like it. Crumble's so easy. It's so delicious. It's a crowd pleaser. And what I love about it, not very many dishes. You yeah, make it in the iron, yeah. you pop it on the table. Oh it looks stunning. Welcome back. And it's time for Make Ahead Monday. You no, know, I'm not a huge fan of the pumpkin spice. Uh, canned pumpkin? That's another story. <laughs> if you've got some leftover from the holiday, our good buddy, Chef Ryan Scott, has two creative ways to use it. Good morning, Hi. Ryan. Good morning. Hi, guys. Man, I miss you guys. How are you? We miss you. you. But you're going to make up for it by helping us with make some souffle pumpkin Ooh. pancakes. That sounds so good. Al, what's really cool about this recipe is you can make this with a box mix. So I take one cup from a box mix that everybody has at home, mm -hmm. and you can make your souffle pancakes just from a little bit of 
Canned pumpkin. Yes, so here's the thing, language. because the holidays, a lot of people think canned pumpkin. I don't want to cook with it anymore. Let me show you two ways of cooking with it. First and foremost, these pancakes, which you guys saw in the little teaser mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. get a little pecan crumble on top, which yes. are really simple to do. So what I did was I took some pecans, I boiled them with a little bit of powdered sugar over the top, some pumpkin pie spice, and then I baked them for about, um, about 15 minutes. Then let's go ahead and make this mixture. So you guys, look in here. I've got okay. eggs, mm. milk, pumpkin pie spice, the canned pumpkin, and a little bit of sugar and milk. Okay. And then what I do is I mix the whole thing up with one half cup of pancake batter. There is your leavening agent. There's your flour, okay. your pancake pancake batter, batter or pancake mix? Yes. Pancake mix, D. Thank you very much. It's the one from the box. <laughs> it's, it's the... It says very light and fluffy mix. So whatever you have at your house, whatever the box mix is, I'm not promoting them. Uh, you just go like that. So guys, what you do is now you mix this together with your pancake mix uh -huh. and eggs and pumpkin batter. And once this all comes together, I took four egg whites and I beat them to make sure they're souffléed. These guys go inside here. You fold the whole mix together, and then you come over to my pan. Now, check this out. A lot of people always ask how to do pancakes perfectly. I take a little bit of uh, Al's Aquanet and mine here, okay? <laughs> and we put this right on top, and we spray this, and then I take and a then you ice cream out. scooper. Hmm. Yeah, I wipe it out. D. So I wipe it out because I don't want the pancakes to have little blotchy flower spots. Oh. I mean, uh, fat spots in there. So that way you just kind of wipe it out and then you take it and just go like this. And you've transferred a little box that is a classic box that we get the store into pumpkin pancakes. Yeah. Then I put them on a roasting rack to let them cool down for a oh. second. That way they don't keep steaming on the bottom because oh. there's nothing oh, worse like than have a pancake that's super beautiful and then it steams and then it's wet and it's right, not, right. not a yeah. nice thing. Okay, Ron, so you've got, you've got now, something with you got something with bacon. Yeah. Ow. I knew I was with you today, buddy. I got you. Okay. <laughs> so what I have here, guys, is some potatoes. I took some potatoes and I boiled them with salted water. And then I roasted pumpkin out of a can. And what I did from there is I took these potatoes. I transferred them out. I put them inside my mixer. Then I cooked bacon and sage, which is right here, Al. Mm. Crispy on the side. And this bacon mm. and sage is going to go inside my pumpkin potato Ooh. puree that you guys do for the holidays. I don't know about you all, but I have a Southern grandmother and an Italian grandmother, <laughs> and the leftover bacon fat is going to go right inside the mixer Ooh, with sour oh cream, God. butter, eggs, and the potatoes. Can these I guys use come together. Potatoes? Like leftover mashed potatoes? Yeah. Dylan, I made these last night, and oh. all I did was just reheat them. So there boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, whatever you got. These go in the mixer with a little bit of bacon love. Mm. You know, it's the beginning of December tomorrow. You know, yeah, we'll watch the wait a little bit time. later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just take this, guys, and you mix it up real quick. It comes together, and you can make potato pancakes that have a little bit of pumpkin in them. That's All so All the good suspects, right? Super easy. And then, because this is for Al, I put extra Ooh, bacon. You're right the on man, top. Ryan. No, bacon. Thank you so much. We miss you, my friend. No. Thanks, Can't Ryan. Wait to see you. Love you guys. All right. Uh, miss for you more too. on these recipes and so much more, go to today.com slash food.
We are back on this Superfood Friday with the latest trend that's taking over the internet. I'm sure you've seen videos of people making these butter boards all over your feed. So of course, you know, everyone wants to try it. And today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here. But you have a special spin on it. At first, I was like, okay, no way you're <laughs> making a butter board. And I was right. This, is, this first one is a little bit more of a Mediterranean board. Yeah, I think you're going to love this. So we're putting a healthy spin on the trend. And this first one, to your point, I'm calling a Mediterranean hummus board. And it's starting with hummus. So here I have two cups of hummus. And it can either be store-bought or if you're super motivated, you could make your own. And then you spread it out onto a board. Now, my board is about 19 inches. So if you want to scale this down, it's very easy to just use a smaller amount of hummus and you can make a single portion or maybe split between two people. But I love this because you could also bring it to a host that's mm -hmm. having a party. I mean, it's like, it's a big statement, right? And you see how easy Already it is to just spread it, it out. Already make it there? Well, you could do either, Al, because I'm going to show you how Lickety Split this comes together. So after it's spread, now you're going to add all of these yummy toppings. So I have here some smoky paprika because I just love the taste of that. And I'm adding, these are just canned sliced black olives mm -hmm. over the top. So the idea is we're building all of these layers of yummy, nutritious Mediterranean goodies. And now we have some chopped um, onion. And now I'm going to put on a lot of greens. Here I'm doing chives and I'm doing some scallions, but you could do cilantro or it's parsley. Good. Really anything great. goes. And then lastly, to top it off, and Al, this I would do when you get there to yeah. the party. A little bit of extra virgin olive oh, oil. Okay. And then you just surround it with sturdy scoopers. So I have, I love sturdy using... Scoopers. <laughs> yeah, because you, you don't want them to droop. So yeah. I have here a no, lot of sliced cucumbers okay. and, of course, some whole grain crackers. Okay. And I also have um, oh, yeah. Slice, warm bread. Oh. That'd be good. Ooh, and dive spears. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, this is great over here. And guys, look at these, like, I mean, bell peppers. I got large bell peppers, but also the little baby bellas. Mm -hmm. And you could put that all over. And you've got this gorgeous, gorgeous, colorful bowl That's that just came together in a couple of and, minutes. And then so I love this one. And now, Joy, you've got a, a sweet board. Oh, it's I'm really excited to share <laughs> this one with you. So we're taking a very different direction here, and we're going to do an addictively sweet dessert bowl. Mm. And dessert bowl. It's a spread or it could be a board. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a pumpkin peanut butter. We're leveling mm. up peanut butter, which already has a lot of heart healthy fat. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is I'm adding equal parts. So this is about half a cup of creamy peanut butter. If uh. there's nut allergies in the house, you could swap in any other nut butter. And this is 100% um, pumpkin puree okay. oh, and I add this yeah. together now I'm gonna it. sweet sweeten it up because it is a dessert I just I'm gonna put it over thinking they would roll some in but that didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> I wish a little bit of that's maple syrup you could also use brown sugar or if you want to go in a no added sugar direction uh -huh. you could certainly use one of the stevia or the monk fruit mm -hmm. blends could use a little honey. and then yeah honey would be good too you could absolutely use honey. Enjoy the yeah. <laughs> and You know what? I tried it with honey. It, uh -huh. To me, um, I preferred the maple syrup, and okay. I also preferred okay. the um, brown it's your, sugar. It's your recipe. You do honey. you. <laughs> yeah, but um, you could absolutely use honey for honey lovers, for sure. Yeah. So you keep stirring. This is nice and smooth. Now let me show you what like it looks like. Today. You're going to love it. And over here, mm. I've loaded up my board with, um, again, sturdy scoopers. Oh, so here we have scoopers. apple slices. Yes. Pears. It's pear season, so I have pears graham and crackers. also graham crackers. Oh, we got to go for the graham crackers. I'm making crackers. this as a snack for my kids today. Nice. All right. Great. Thank you. Nice. So, Thank you, Joy. So good. Thank you so much. Very doable. I got to get some pumpkin. I look yeah. forward to you coming back in the you studio. Too and just bring some for me. Bring some of these treats. <laughs> for these recipes, just head to today.com slash food. Good to see you. Welcome to The Boost. We are here to start your day off with a boost of positivity. And
Yeah. We're going to start with the family of groundbreaking entertainer and civil rights activist Harry Belafonte. He passed away in April, and they're working to carry on his incredible legacy. NBC's Morgan Radford sat down with them to learn about their mission and how they're healing and honoring Belafonte's memory through action. Harry Belafonte struck a chord with his signature Calypso song from the 1950s. His career spanned over six decades, solidifying his place in Hollywood from roles in films from 1954's Carmen Jones to the 2018 hit Black Klansman. But the Tony, Emmy, and Grammy award-winning performer ultimately prioritized activism over stardom, forming a bridge between Hollywood and the civil rights movement, marching in Washington 60 years ago and fighting for equality his entire life. Who did you see sit at this table growing up? Celebrities, political luminaries, Dr. King. David Belafonte crisscrossed the globe with his trailblazing father for nearly five decades, and after having a front seat to that history, now looks that to expand upon that work in his own way. Story. Tell me about the Belafonte Family Foundation. We took what was a lifetime for me of experiences in the home, in the professional realm, and put it into a vehicle that might help communities that are generally underserved. Oh, yeah. His wife, Milena, 20-year-old daughter, Serafina, and 16-year-old son, Amadeus, complete the core think tank focused on health, education, and social justice. How do you all make that mission a reality? We have multiple pillars, social justice and wrongful incarceration. That was very much Harry's area, but Serafina is very much involved in that. We have the youth, anxiety, and bullying. That's very much on Amadeus's mind. I am particularly interested in mass incarceration and wrongful incarceration in the criminal justice system and particularly creating this program which is still in the works. You can get lawyers who would volunteer their time that would literally hop on a truck and go to underserved communities to give legal advice that a lot of people don't have access to. And nowadays, what about you? When I was younger, I got bullied a lot. And so one like idea that we had was kids that are getting bullied at school can go to a community online where they can play their favorite video games and talk with people the same age and who have gone through similar struggles. Beyond these future goals, the foundation is currently helping by mentoring kids through a martial arts program and awarding scholarships, all to honor Harry's legacy. We are taking all of this that he instilled in them and in us and bringing it into the world moving forward. What do you want the world to know about your grandfather? He was an amazing man who like broke so many barriers. He was able to go throughout life in such a unique way while doing so much and still caring about his family. He really did his best to show up for us in a way that he couldn't for his children. He was very passionate about the cause and about his work. We miss him every day and he was really funny. I remember vividly being four years old and he goes, hey Serafina, look at this. And he starts to lick the plate. Oh wow. The ice cream. And he's like, you have to do it after every meal. So I started doing that. After thinking every meal. <laughs> that was what was needed. Yeah, he was definitely fun. I've had some of the biggest laughs with your grandfather. Despite sweet memories, David says his father was a complicated man. What he came from, from nothing as an abused child and out in the world way too young on his own. He brought to the table, I think, the best that he could as a father, and then certainly grew in to be a forward-facing champion of so much. This is your dad. He's passed away. How are you doing? For me, I know, I know what I had with him. I know where he disappointed me. I know where he amazed me. There's not a day we don't miss him. For a list of reasons. But there's a very steady, even keel of inspiration and motivation to do this. So we're putting that into the work because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Now to a fascinating story about a CEO by day who strikes a much different tune at night. NBC's Ann Thompson found out how he is chasing his musical dreams. Everything connects. It's not unusual for a musician to have a side hustle. We can work this rainbow now together. 
another job that pays the bills between gigs. Though each note he plays from his album and the words he wrote energizes him, Eugene Woods kept his worlds separate. That changed during the pandemic when um, sort of these worlds came together. His friends call him Gene, and his day job is in a hospital. Well, actually, 67 of them across six states as CEO of Advocate Health. Have you ever been stopped by a patient who said, I've heard your music? Well, I have, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's quite, you know, heartwarming for them to actually pay that much attention because we're trying to pay <laughs> attention to them. Advocate Health, based in Charlotte, North Carolina, is the nation's third largest nonprofit hospital system. Gene oversees 150,000 employees and 6 million patients. Does music help your day job? Leadership and music are connected in really amazing ways. Sometimes what I do is more like a conductor of a classical symphony, where everybody has these orchestrated parts. During the pandemic, it was more like leading a jazz band. You know, because you really, uh, it's about improvisation. We can work it out. Does it calm you down or, or does it energize you? What's it, what's the impact of music on you? It grounds me, uh, you know, it's sort of my meditation. And it, I think it allows me to be a better leader because I come to the job with a different sensibility. Gene's American born father loved jazz. His mom, a native of Spain, flamenco music and dancing. Just kind of seeped into to my DNA. And I think that's really in part responsible for me being a musician. I just heard it every single day. It was, a, it was the soundtrack of our lives. Growing up in Spain where his dad served in the US Navy, Gene's uncle introduced him to the guitar. His parents bought him one when they moved to Philadelphia. It wasn't until years later that I found out my father forwent three months of rent to buy me a guitar and an amp. And to this day, it's the best investment in my education because they couldn't afford college. His musical ambitions nurtured in garage bands. Paying gigs at Penn State helped finance his undergraduate and master's degrees. The public performing stopped as he climbed the corporate ladder in healthcare. But Gene kept playing and writing in his off hours. Music has never left my life. Now fronting Gene Woods and the Soul Alliance. He plays with musicians who back James Brown and John Mayer in a studio owned by Grammy winning producer Glenn Tabor. It doesn't matter where you come from and who you are and what your day job is. You either bring it or you don't. Yeah. And and Gene brings it or these guys wouldn't be. Your brother is in chains, we should. Singing into the microphone Prince used to record Purple Rain, Gene has found life's elusive equilibrium, an album, music videos, and the corner office. People talk about work-life balance. I talk about really work-life harmony. Um, because I think when these pieces come together you, and integrate, you can be, I think, your, your, your whole selves, your best selves. When we come back, the property lovers share their love for each other, home renovations, and their flourishing family. Coming up after this.
the boost, you probably heard of the property lovers. They're YouTube stars who went from renovating homes to building a remarkable life together. Well, now they're sharing their story with the whole world. And Chanel Jones caught up with them. It took a while to get here, but we're both proud of who we are, and we're proud to be a same-sex couple raising children. PJ and Thomas McKay's love story began more than a decade ago in their hometown of Cleveland, Tennessee, when they met at a party. I was like, this guy is pretty cool, but I think it was like a year or two later that we reconnected over Facebook, and we started hanging out the next day. We both were like, we could see this going somewhere. And in October of 2015, they officially tied the knot. You may kiss your husband. Shortly after getting married, the couple began documenting their life and love for home renovation. We're actually going to take you guys along with us as we renovate this bathroom. Capturing the hearts of hundreds of thousands of fans across social media. We had no idea that it would turn into um, a profession. It was just more about sharing our lives and then it kind of turned into something else entirely. What kind of feedback have you received over the years? We have a whole uh, bulletin board that PJ made full of letters from people all over who have written us and shared a little bit about their lives and how our lives connect. People have especially connected to the couple as they've opened up about their path to parenthood. Along the way, you talk about the fact that you had this idea of growing your family. How did you navigate that? Well, we always knew we wanted kids. We just didn't know how to go about it. There was just something that was pulling us towards foster care. We're gonna be doing foster care classes for the next nine weeks. We were hesitant because we are in a homosexual relationship, but what sexual orientation you are, the color of your skin, none of that matters as long as the kid is going to, uh, to a good home. In 2019, PJ and Thomas became foster parents, opening their home to three young siblings, Alan, Raya, and Anna. How old were they when you first got the kids? They were four, two and a half, and 18 months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd never changed a diaper in my life. We went from zero kids to three kids overnight. There's so much uncertainty in foster care because there are mounds and mounds of paperwork, check-ins from the caseworkers. Our court dates kept getting pushed back because of COVID. It was an emotional journey. For us, we really just tried to focus on the fact that no matter how long the kids were gonna be with us, that we could change their life in a positive way. And in August of 2021, the McKays became a forever family, adopting the three young kids. What does a good day look like in your household with three little ones? It usually involves a trip out to our farm that we are fixing up. The kids love it out there. And then dinner around the table. We're super big on creating those moments together as a family. In their small southern town, the McKays admit not many families look like them, but say their community has been so welcoming. I was outside on our front porch and our mailman came up and he said, oh, is that your husband? Are those y'all's kids? And I said, yes, we adopted them. And then he shared with me that he grew up in a very conservative Christian home. He just said, you know, Jesus loves you guys, I love you guys, and I think that's wonderful. It was a really special moment. And for PJ and Thomas, it's a reminder that family, no matter how it's made, is everything. Picture this, young PJ, young Thomas are here right now. What would they say? about the life that you've built? Well, young Thomas would say, number one, I don't believe it. And number two, that this is kind of what I always hoped it would look like. Young PJ would be like, I just want to speed it up to get to, to where we are now. Our next story spotlights a modern day trailblazer. Meet the midwife helping moms to be get affordable care and empowering her community when it comes to women in healthcare. Here's Chanel once again. My name is Brittany Chu Kelman. I'm a certified professional midwife and the executive and clinical director of Jama Birth Village. Jama means family in Swahili. We're really centered on culture and heritage. For Brittany, her nonprofit clinic in Ferguson, Missouri, offers low risk moms affordable peri and postnatal care infused with some African traditions. We work in a very holistic fashion. We're thinking about mental and emotional well being physical health, 
nutritional health and what family structure looks like. We provide midwifery care and doula care support, and then we provide social support services. So that could be mother baby donations, mom support groups, childbirth education. And we've been going strong now a little bit over four years, and we've served over 400 families. Hey, Jada. Brittany helped to bring Jada Huffman and Barry Dilworth's son into the world through a natural home birth. I was right there. <laughs> it's very rewarding, especially when you have um, people that you love and care about around you. Brittany's vision and determination is rooted in her own journey into motherhood. My first two children were born via C-section, and by the time I got pregnant the third time around, I hired a midwife. I was a teen mom. I had my first son at 14 years old. It took me years before I could comfortably say that because of the shame and guilt that I held inside of me. It was just a struggle for me to navigate what it was to be a woman. And how I tie that back around to Jama, we do have different communal support systems so that women don't feel voiceless and alone. Just in postpartum. Yes. No woman is ever turned away, but black women are the priority. According to the CDC, black women are three times as likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause than white women. Brittany wants to disrupt the alarming statistic. We need more diversity and access to uh, black midwives. Within the next three years, our goal is to help another five women graduate and become certified professional midwives. Beyond representation, Brittany says that educating a network of providers outside of her community on inequities in health care will also make a difference. Dismantling biases and racism um, is very, very hard. We have been so lucky to meet some amazing women who are true allies. Jamai is well known in the community for really saving ourselves. I just so firmly believe in what the village is doing um, in providing unbiased access to midwifery care. As a chiropractor, I wanted to be able to help. It's really important as an ally that, that I remain just that and not try to steer the bus. I'm just honored to be a part of the experience. Ferguson is fertile ground for change. We literally spend as much time as we can to uplift families, to have a wholesome, successful life. Coming up, an inside look at a new app fueled by positivity. That's after the break.
We're back on the boost with a look at an app that's quickly gone viral among high schoolers, and it is right up our alley. It's all about complimenting your friends with a mission to boost self-esteem and spread positivity. NBC Savannah Sellers got a first-hand look at the impact it's having on young people. Someone said that I would be the I would finish the test after three minutes, which I really appreciate. Best laugh comes to mind because it says has has a ten pack. Compliments of Gas, the wildly popular new social media app that has millions of teenagers complimenting each other or gassing each other up. Finn, Nikki, William, and Brandon go to New York City's Stuyvesant High School, where nearly 900 students are on the app. When you open up your phone, how does it make you feel? Great, because I think people are noticing little details about me that I thought they didn't know about. You know like when a random person compliments you on your street and it's like really nice? Yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah, nice it's feeling. Like that. I got one that stated that Taylor Swift would write a love song about me, and I just had a smile on my face. Like, this person gets me. <laughs> the four sophomores showed me how it works. First, users anonymously answer a series of polls about their friends. Cutest little sneeze. The polls range from thoughtful superlatives. Has the kindest heart. <laughs> to flirty confessions. You would ask them out if they weren't taken. When a student is picked, they get a notification or a flame, but no name of the person who voted. It's anonymous, <laughs> so I try to, you know, do a little background digging. A little digging? A little digging? Just a little bit. <laughs> a little. Part of the reason gas is resonating, it's authentic to this generation. It speaks their language. Can we spit back? No. no. Translation, you speak the truth. I drip on that. Translation, you have good style. Looks like, like a whole meal. Translation, extremely attractive. Gas is the brainchild of former Facebook manager Nikita Beer. He says he made the app to spread positivity and improve self-esteem of teens. There's a lot of toxic things about today's social networks, and we just wanted a place where you could just open your phone and see something that makes you feel better about yourself. Launched in three states in August, it took just one month for Gas to shoot to the top of the U.S. App Store. It's now nationwide, and Beer says their feedback shows it's making a difference. We get messages every day from teens, hundreds of them, uh, about the impact it's had. It's helped with their depression, their anxiety. Even some have told us that they've reconsidered self-harm. Wow. Can you expand on that a little bit? When you're uh, in your formative years as a teen, you're trying to understand uh, how you're being perceived. What GAS has done is it provides a venue for you to open up to your friends and say what you love about each other. And that has enabled people to feel they fit in, that, they, that they're liked by their peers. How nice is that, to I, have an app and a space that just feels fun? Uh, it's absolutely amazing. I check it when I wake up. So when I wake up, like, there's like 10 people that said, I love your hair. Nice and best smile. I walk down the halls and I feel a little bit better about myself. In just five months, more than one and a half billion compliments have been delivered through gas. Just since we've been talking, tell me about the notifications you got. Would make an ugly face and still look pretty. Oh. Would ditch studying for finals for a concert, which <laughs> you if would it was a Taylor Swift have. concert. The yeah, you yes. would. Baby, you're my firework. Oh. oh. I want to know who sent that might be the sole reason for global warming. I don't know who this is. Oh, it's supposed to mean like you're hot. Yeah. Not oh, like wait, you actually. No. Oh, that's what it, so many compliments. I like the glasses. Thanks. <laughs> Gen Zers kindling kindness and sparking positivity. One flame at a time. Next up, move up her grandma, NBC's Maya Eaglin has the story of how a new generation is picking up their needles and hooks and embracing crochet as a hobby. Online, you could say Gen Z is hooked on a craft some might typically associate with older generations, crochet. I was so excited when I figured out how to do it. The hashtag crochet has been viewed nearly 22 billion times on TikTok with the rise of the granny core trend. It's being embraced by celebrities like Harry Styles and Olympians like Tom Daly, who at the Tokyo Games watch meets with needles and yarn in hand. Now it's turned profitable for some young people, like 27-year-old Jada Zabala and 25-year-old Emma Ujifusa, who actually met through the online crochet community. Yeah, we didn't actually talk until we planned to meet each other in person. But you guys clicked. Yeah, yeah. instantly. Yeah. Once serial hobbyists, they're now dedicated entrepreneurs, making a living by selling their own patterns and pieces online, like Emma's famous fire sweater or Jada's popular pillow cozy. In the pandemic, I had gotten laid off so 
my first thing was, you know, how can I find a hobby that I can kind of monetize. Experts suggest the trend might have been fueled by the COVID-19 lockdown. In the first year of the pandemic, around six in 10 Americans took on a new hobby and nearly half earned money from it. Anxiety went way up, particularly for young people. The ability to socialize, of course, went way down. And that combination made it really ripe for this age group to take up crafts. People can create businesses now online right, and get visibility that they couldn't before so people can really make businesses where they would have no exposure. An age-old craft historically used to make items like gloves or doilies now given new life by Gen Z, using crochet for prom dresses, bucket hats, and statement pieces. What advice would you give someone if they wanted to dabble in this or start their own business? My advice is always just to like do it. Click on a video or reach out to someone you know who crochets. Taking that advice to heart, I tried it out, stepping into the grandma era trend and trying to crochet a granny square. Attempting it once. Grab that yarn mm -hmm. and pull it through the hole. Twice. And you remember how many was in the corner? Girl, no. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe three times. Chain two? No, not yet. Not yet. Oh. Before finally. Yeah, and all the way through. It. And that's a knot. Cute. You did your first granny It looks square. so good. Because there's so much functionality and because you can do so much with crochet, I think it's always going to exist and be around in some sort of form. Maya Eaglin, NBC News. Coming up, we've got the latest viral video to boost your day. Stay with us. Boost. We've got one more video that's sure to leave you with a smile. Check it out. Taylor Listen. Swift is many things to many people. Singer, songwriter, performer, Travis Kelsey's love interest. But now, one more thing you can add to the list. Baby Whisperer. Take a look. So here's the backstory. Beth Nicely is a fitness instructor, personal trainer, Broadway performer, and friend of today. Well, throughout her pregnancy, she uh, kept up her busy training and fitness schedule. And you know what song she played all the time? Bad Blood by Taylor Swift, the version featuring Kendrick Lamar. So by the time her baby girl was born, she had actually been listening to that oh my God. song in utero for, for a while. And now it's the song that suits her. Maybe it wasn't Swifty. Maybe it was Kendrick Lamar. And that's it for today. We hope you had some fun. We also did. And we're going to see you next time with more of The Boost right here on Today All Day. Good morning, welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery.
How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on Today. Hey there, welcome to Start Today. We're stepping into a new season and it's the perfect time to turn over a new leaf. Whether you're, you're setting a new fitness goal for the fall or starting a workout routine for the first time, there's a place for everybody in our Start Today community. We've got over a half million members and it's never too late to join. Just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with other folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, our Chanel Jones takes us inside her training for the New York City Marathon. Plus, today contributor Ali Love revealing her secrets for boosting confidence. And later, we have some simple workouts, including one you can do right from your couch. This is Start Today. First, let's kick things off with our fitness leader, Stephanie Monsoor, and two community members. Okay, so I want you to meet Nancy Stover McCarthy of New Jersey. Fun fact, she just told me her late mom, Dorothy, used to work here as an executive assistant here at the Today is Show. Is that not crazy? That is so crazy. Thank you guys for this full circle moment. Well, how beautiful it's is beautiful. that? It's beautiful. I love that. Okay, and by the way, I should tell people at home, I'm going to brag on you. You consistently surpassed 10 thousand steps every single day. Give it up for Nancy. Day. Come on. Yes. Proud of you. Thank you for joining our little club. So do you have a question for Stephanie? Yes, I do. Okay. So I've walked a 5K before, mm -hmm. but now I want to walk and run a 5K. Good. Yes, I'm proud Woo! of you. Yes. Okay. All so right. how do I prepare my body for the running part? Yes, so we're going to step it up here. And part of our training plan includes stretch and strength. So I'm going to have you hold onto this chair here for balance, Nancy. So anyone at home that needs a modification, go ahead. We're going to do some forward leg swings. Now, this is loosening up the hip flexors, which get really, really tight when you're walking or running a lot. So I want to make sure that you're incorporating. Yeah, you do. I know. And heels. <laughs> Good job, Chanel. I want to make sure that you're really loosening things up, but then for strength, we're going to hold it here in front. Squeeze that quad. Good. Strengthen the quad for five seconds and then reach it to the back. Strengthen the glutes and the hamstrings. This is going to help with running, that motion. We need to build the quads. We need to build the glutes, the hamstrings, so that we can move forward faster and with more power. But we also got to stretch things it's out. It's a good that active feel good? stretch. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. This was yeah. great. Feel it. Well, let's tell yes. everybody about Joe. Joe Marrow. Marrow? Marrow. Marrow. Yes. Joe Marrow of Long Island, New York. I want to make sure I got this right. You lost 130 pounds yes. in three yes. years. All well, naturally. Give it up for Joe, guys. Yes. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. And is it true that all by walking, you kept it off by walking? So cardio is, was very important for my weight loss. Um, without walking about nine to 10,000 steps a day, I wouldn't have achieved my weight loss Good goals. For you. Man, I'm so happy yes, for you. Thank you very Dude, much. That's so yes, great. Thank you. You got some for Steph? Yes. So last year, I ran my first 5K at my alma mater's homecoming, FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast University. Oh, yes, I went to high school in Naples. Oh, I know wow, FGCU. that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> I'm planning on running my second 5K next month. Yes. Do you have any suggestions or tips for me uh, for my next 5K? Yeah, you know, especially in the heat down in Florida, it is hard to, yes. you know, keep up your stamina. But one thing people forget is to stretch those inner okay. thighs. Okay. So what we're going to do is open the feet wider than the shoulders. Nice. And then go ahead and bend to one side, keeping the other leg straight. Do you feel that stretch in the inner thigh of yes. the stationary leg? Yes. Good. Good. Yes. And then we're going to come Good. back through center and over the other side. And Jacob, props yeah. to you. This is dynamic stretching. We're Thank Stretching in motion here Somebody to warm up. <laughs> and then we're going to hold this stretch here and turn this into a strength move. So again, strengthening the quad, the glute, but still feeling that stretch, coming through center and going to the other side and holding this strength pose for five seconds. And then alternating. That's going to help you be more loose and limber so yes. that you can run maybe faster even, break a personal Great. record, and feel better afterwards. Less recovery time when you it. do the stretching. If they can do it, you can do it at home too. Thank you, Steph. Amen. Yes. Yes. You guys, congrats. Thank yes, you guys. Of course, for you know, you know, thank you. Yes. Great job. Coming up, Chanel's giving us an inside look at what it's like to train for the New York City Marathon. Then later, Ali Love sharing tips for bossing up and boosting confidence. We'll be right back.
We're back. Over the past couple of months, you may have heard our very own Chanel Jones is going to be running the New York City Marathon. Here's a look at her journey so far and the huge strides she's been making in her training. Running around is a mainstay of my day at work, at home, and even more with my kids. Running as a sport, though, that's new territory. I did not like gym class as a kid. I hated the monkey bars. I hated field day, all of that stuff. But I love a challenge, and this one's a biggie. And I'm saying, okay, you know what, Chanel? You didn't like it because it was hard. So now you need to take your 45-year-old self and do something that is really challenging. The New York City Marathon. All 26 miles, something I never imagined I'd attempt, even in my wildest dreams. So when I first started doing this, I just thought I would go outside and practice sometimes. I never really thought about really what it takes to prepare for a marathon. For help, I enlisted Nike running coach Jess Woods, who's done 18 ultra marathons. Jess has been a godsend, so she'll send me a schedule for the week. What I've learned is, Running isn't always just running. Some days you may just run for 30 minutes. Other days you'll run for a longer amount of time. But the goal is to get to 26 miles. Jess introduced me to the concept of prehab, an assessment to help improve your form and get ahead of any potential injury. There are no tubes, there are no cords. It's all cameras. And using those cameras and syncing them with the treadmill, they're able to analyze your gait, how you're running, where you're putting your weight your posture, and you're graded on your performance. And I got a C the first time. I don't get C's. I had to lean forward a little more. I had to improve my cadence. Just tweaking a few of those things, running a little bit more forward, got me from a C to a B. Initially, five miles seemed like crazy town. So now, when I'm aiming for 12 on the weekend, five doesn't seem so bad. To get those endorphins flowing, Jess and I always start. Oh. Yeah? Yes, with a warm up. Quick, pop, pop. This is nice that we're at a track today. Yeah. Because we're usually just trying to find a quiet space on the plaza. Today's goal speed work so that my marathon pace stays consistent. This can be faster than your marathon pace now. Okay. We want you to get tired. Okay. Because then you're going to try and find that marathon pace again. After. On tired legs. Ooh. Okay. All right. Doing it. So it feels hard, but not impossible. Right. Okay. Yes. And 203 for that lap. Seriously, who am I? Like, who am I right now? Ultimately, it's about a lot more than just running. A lot of us have things that we've always wanted to do and life gets in the way. So I am hoping that if I do this, that it will maybe trigger something in you to maybe do something as well. Um, because I think together we can do hard things. All right, let's do it. And while I still have two more months and many, many miles ahead of me, I'm grateful for how far I've come. Three, two, woo! Perfect! Get nice there. job! <laughs> woo -hoo! Marathon pace after some hard intervals. Progress. Yeah, more than a little bit of progress. That oh was awesome. Nicely done. Yay. Thank you. And like Chanel, finding the right mindset is really important when tackling a big challenge or even in our daily lives. Today, contributor Ali Love has just what we need to feel empowered and confident. I love this conversation because who hasn't been in a moment where you don't feel your most confident self? Absolutely. Totally. Right? And we need a few things, a few tools in our toolbox to pull from so we can boost our confidence, you, whether it's a morning, a night, or a sure. day. Sure. When you say boss up, what do you mean? Oh, boss up, meaning set the standard, establish the tone, right? Okay. So set the standard means like there's no point in following the rules when you can solve real problems for real people by mm -hmm. listening and staying curious. And then establish the tone means any room or Zoom you walk in, you can affect people's energy negatively or positively. Ooh, we all like know that. this. Okay. So you, you have to own that. that power. True. We agree. One of the things that comes up first is the way you look. So Riley here, who looks very familiar. Hi, Can y'all tell? Riley's rocking a look that I think is confident. Today I wear my afro. Many of us, when we're trying to be our most confident selves, we have one or two looks that boost that inter mm -hmm. internal confidence. She has a slick back pony, a red lip, and a cat eye. So keep it simple. Keep it fierce. Keep it focused, baby. You look great. <laughs> you look great. You know, wow. Fantastic. Okay. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because
because sometimes when I feel like I need a blue, like I'll wear my three piece as opposed to, mm. you know, a sport coat because I feel like that kind of brings how you, you up. How you feel. Yeah. Yes, okay. of course. All right. Sometimes how you look on the outside will affect how you feel on the inside. Yes. Let's talk about some confidence boosting content and, and we'll get to the music and what you, what people listen to in just a moment. But you maintain this book changed your life? I love wow. this book. Radical Calendar, Kim Scott. I think the read is a necessity. The reason for it, it really informs you how to handle yourself in your professional setting, personally and professionally, and then how to carry that with you throughout the day. Sometimes we feel less confident when we're in a meeting or when, our, when we're around our coworkers. Mm -hmm. And so it's like how to speak up, yeah. how to stay focused in those moments and truly be yourself. And I think this book really, you know, gives you the tools for that. So I love it. I've read it a couple times. What about what we're listening to? Uh, a boss playlist. I mean, why not? <laughs> we're going to boss up. It's this called is, a boss playlist. It is oh, called, called the boss, the boss yes, playlist. Is this yours? Oh, yes, I made this playlist oh, this specific, great. specifically for all of you. Yeah, it's um, yes, this is all our women empowerment music. This you can like do it for, for your walking in the morning, Al. Hot mm -hmm. girl walk, Craig. I know you love a hot girl walk. I do. I do. <laughs> Craig does <laughs> a hot On the girl tread, on the Peloton tread. But oh. this this is music that really reminds you of who you are, That's a great and playlist. I love it. Yes. So some Janet Jackson in here too. Boss playlist on Spotify. Yes, on Spotify. Oh, oh Lauren Hill. Yeah. I this is it. a I great playlist. You know, okay. I remember in the '70s there would be these posters on walls like a cat on a on a limb hang in there. <laughs> uh, but you you've got a more modern version of this. I do. I think what you feed yourself internally is so important. And we talk about this all the time. And so these are some of my favorite quotes. If not now, like if not you win. If not now win. And I think it's like, it's a reminder that you are important and, mm -hmm. and that you are here and you can do this. Um, another thing that I always say, work the quirk. This is a little quirky, so don't judge me, folks. Okay. It's called, what do you call it? Work the quirk. Work the quirk. Work the quirk. Okay. Anytime you need a confidence booster, look at photos of yourself, photos of you and your friends. It reminds you of who you are in the public eye. Like, Ooh. how do you, how does the world see you? And so it sounds weird to look at yourself, but go through your no. photos well, and look at yourself. I've got a your ton of our, yes. of our yeah. pictures. And so, you do too. Yes. In fact, I have a, if you go in my dressing room right now, yes. Al Roker's picture is about There you go. Door. I mean, who, who doesn't want to That reminds you of what you don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I will say this this little, what you, um, you know, the quotes Same. and stuff like that. I grew up with them all over the house. My yeah. mom would put them in the bathroom, so yeah. I feel like it was good for her, but it was good for me as a yes. teenager, too, to see these things when You're I left the house. You're feeding yourself. You're absorbing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my last thing, which is really, really important, uh -huh. is when you need a confidence booster, okay. text your friends and have them remind you of who you are. Oh. So I've texted my friends, Emma Lovewell or Sierra, and just say, like, I need, a, I need a moment. Can you just help me? Like, I'm like, hey, hype moment. Come through for me, sis. Oh. And she does. And these are just like, they'll send me a text message. That's a great idea. A hype moment. And, and I have a, a little uh, surprise for oh. all three of you. Okay. okay. All right. So, Al, you're up first. Now, okay. you're good at reading the teleprompter. I saw you on your live this morning. Um, so, let's go ahead and read. Can you see that? We're going to oh, roll wow. this teleprompter. Oh. Al, who is this from, Al? That's from Jim Gaffigan. It's, a, it's Age of Anger, Ego, and Artificial Intelligence. You're an unsung hero. Everyone has struggles and heartbreak, but you seem to embrace every moment. Oh, so nice. Authentic kindness. The world needs more Al Rokers. Please don't end up being a serial killer <laughs> because that would make me look stupid. <laughs> I got bad news for you, Jim. <laughs> but thank you. That's awfully so nice. Wow. Such not, a not just Al Craig. Take a look. Well, not, whose text am I reading? Oh, this is oh, my younger yes. brother. That's beautiful. Read it. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. hey, man. God broke the mold when he made you. Your understanding and compassion for others is something most don't know. Wow. Uh, I love to watch you when you work because your love and passion for your craft is absolutely remarkable. If we were in person, we would raise a glass of bourbon, but... Here's to you, my friend. Continue to knock it out of the park, bro. Oh, wow. Cool. Does that that's make you feel lovely. good? Almost made me cry. Yes, wow. yes. Okay, here you go. Oh. Jeez. That Jeez. is so sweet, Alan. And Chanel, of course, for you. Oh, oh Dylan. Dylan. Oh, that's so sweet. Dear Chanel, your laugh brings me so much joy, and your zest for life is infectious. Thank you for knowing me so well. Aww. Our friendship is truly special. Oh, yes. That's texting. a great idea. <laughs> yes, you, texting Allie. your friends and family to remind you of who you are is the biggest confident booster. So I hope some of these tips, again, in your toolkit, you can pull from yeah. at various moments in your lives. And you can be there for others. Thank that's you. just That was great. What a great idea. Thank you, Allie. Up next, we're going to show you some low-intensity exercises to help your body recover after a workout. Plus, some simple moves you can do while lying down. Just lay down, because we'll be right back after these messages.
Welcome back. Like most things, exercise is all about balance. Sometimes it can be tempting to skip rest days, especially when you're making progress and you want that momentum to keep going. Well, Nike Master Trainer Joe Holder recently walked us through some low-intensity workouts to help make the most out of your rest days. So okay. We're going to talk about active recovery. Okay. Uh, I'm training for a marathon right now. It's amazing. You Just like too. Chanel. I know. Yeah. There's a trick here. In active recovery, we often use lower intensity workouts to help us feel better. Yeah. But you can also use this in daily life. Okay. okay. Low intensity workouts, three times a week, 20 minutes. Uh -huh. Both increase energy and reduce fatigue, people say. Oh, okay. So we're okay. going to start okay. with jump rope. Okay. And this is what we're going to do show you some different ones. Let's jump rope. All Come right. On. When's the last time we let's jumped rope? jump rope, Chanel? Yeah, let's go. Um, like when I was in fifth there grade. Go. So this, oh, look at that. This is an easy oh, one to use. <laughs> nice and simple. Look so I'll do it instead. So you would jump rope, uh -huh. and you would put it down. And how then long you give me a that body for? weight exercise. So you okay. go one minute jump rope. So play like I did that. One minute right, body fine. weight. Uh -huh. Yep. And it's nice and easy. You do that for 10 rounds, low intensity. You should you do be that. doing that so very I rapidly. I should be able to talk for it. Yes. Yeah, but I could talk. My heart rate is good. Well, yeah, that's good to hear you. Another <laughs> one we got is foam roll. Del, okay. you come with me. All right. So we're going to sit here. Easy way. Okay. So again, remember, a lot of people to sit here, complain of sore muscles or fatigue. Right. That's why they don't improve their health. Okay. But this is a super simple one to be able to do that. Siri's interested in Siri's what you're saying. Siri's interested. Yes. Yep. So we roll there. Okay. Nice and quick. Maybe get the hamstring. Good. You make it look so easy. Your, you, your limbs are so much longer than mine. Then you stand up. Okay. This is what we got. So after you do that, then yes. you just give me a nice dynamic exercise. So hug the knee to the okay. chest. Okay. So we go one muscle group on the foam roll one minute. So this Joe, is, is there a way to, to modify that if you've got like knee problems? Yeah, this one, knee uh -huh. there, and nice and easy. All you have to do, maybe just move across the body. Uh -huh. We're just working ranges of motion. So Al, this I got is, something for you. Good. It feels good? Yeah. One team, like one dream. Yeah. I got <laughs> one something team, for you. One team, one dream. Okay. We call this weighted aerobics. Okay. So nice and easy. You could just find some weight. Uh -huh. You could maybe give me a curl, all right? right let's you go. give me a lateral raise. Oh, Come okay. On. Give me that Long curl. Long limbs. There we go. That's it. Lateral He's got raise. a wingspan. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the push press. Okay. Good. Oh. And then okay. we just cycle through exercises. Just keep yep. Uh -huh. For about 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Take 15 seconds off. Repeat that. 10 or so rounds. And and yeah. even if you can't do heavy or heavier weights, like canned, canned goods, yep. things like that? Exactly, because remember what we said, low intensity. Low, low intensity. And guess what improved energy better, uh, low intensity than actually medium? Really? So, yes. All right. Active okay. recovery. So if you do that real quick, bang, Boom. 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 that's all you yeah. need. So my, fa my takeaway, right. one team, one dream. One team, one dream. <laughs> right. Just ahead, we've got two more workouts for you, including exercises, I love this, you can do from your couch. We'll be right back.
We're back with more Start Today workouts. First up, Peloton instructor Tunde Oyunane stopping by the third hour to share some simple ways to tone arms and core. First of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. And tell me what it means. First of all, that's next level. That's um, but for all of you guys to be highlighted in a group of women who are changing how we think about fitness, it's not just leg warmers and doing grapevines. You know, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But you guys are so forward thinking. Well, it's incredible to be here. Last time I was here, I was celebrating the launch of my book, Speak. And now to be one of six incredible women featured as the forces of fitness for amazing. women's health. It feels pretty surreal. I was picked on and teased for the way that I looked as a kid and this shoot was for younger Tunde to be mm -hmm. celebrated in my body mm -hmm. for my flaws and all it all in all it is for every single person who has never felt comfortable in their own skin ah, I love really that. incredible love well it. Said. I know. all right so you're gonna show us uh, by jumping right into this workout we've got some yeah. fans, NBC staffers uh, so let's just get to it all right so this is a quick 10 minute workout that you can do at your home for arms and core all you need is music and some dumbbells we're gonna start right, okay. gonna grab your weight we're gonna start with our arms and then we'll finish this workout on the floor. We're gonna go from into some bicep curls to hammer curls. So in a bicep curl, your palms are facing up towards your shoulder and then you're gonna come back up and flip your grip so that your palms rotate and face inward on the way in. So this is a really great way to maximize on time, targeting both heads of your biceps. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. And in a I've, suit, I'm, I'm wildly impressed. impressed. Yeah. Does it matter how heavy they are? So I would recommend anything from about five to 20 pounds. We're working with a little lighter dumbbells today. I don't wanna break too much of a sweat in our, our beautiful attire, but I, <laughs> I'd recommend about 10 to 20 12 okay. um, of the bicep to hammer curl. From there, we're gonna go into an overhead extension. This is gonna target oh, the gonna... back, this, yeah, now you feel it. Ooh. This is gonna target the back of your arms. So make sure to keep your elbows rotated in, almost framing your hairline, wonderful. And Tunde, how far do you go back when you do this? I'll try this at home sometimes and try to figure out like, what's the right point? You're killing, I would say you wanna keep your hips tucked. You so it. once you start to notice it. that your hips are flaring, maybe you're going back a little bit too far. I should start working out of my dressing room. I know, Strategy. Right, you start to feel yeah. it quickly, right? Yeah. Even the light dumbbells will attack you too. Yeah. So same thing here about 10 to 12 uh, before you move on to our final arm movement, which is an L raise. So this is gonna target your shoulder, specifically the front and sides of your shoulders at the same exact time. Yeah. Core so stay strong, I hip know. stay yeah. tuck. You know nice, what? Nice. It's Staggering. one of those things where we have no excuse because you can do this at home. You can you know do I mean? it at home. You yeah. can do it at the airport. You can yeah. do it while you're waiting for your laundry to, to dry. I say create a playlist, three to four songs. And again, you can bang this out really quickly in a matter of 10 minutes. So we're going to put our dumbbells down. So those, those first three movements, 10 to 12 reps three times through. Okay. We're going to finish out with some core. Now, uh, advanced version, you can hold on to a dumbbell. Feet are planted on the ground. We're going into a Russian twist. We're gonna twist from right to left. So from side to side. Now, Ooh. if you're like my guy, Peter, who is on his Peloton just about every single day, That's a, this is easy well. for him. And so Peter and I, we're gonna pick our heels up off the ground. Was this a progression to this see movement. If I could do this. Very nice. Ooh, yes. Working from side to side. You know who's appreciating you saying that? My wife, who knows that is not. <laughs> who knows that is not true. You gotta wear the the badge, right? The Peloton badge. Girl, oh, how long are we supposed to? So do we're this? here for 30 seconds. We're gonna fast forward. Seconds. Seconds. This is like a yeah. This is a fake 30 Five. seconds. You're gonna set your dumbbells down. We're gonna go to, into our last and final movement, a hollow hold. So back is completely flat on the mat. It's so flat that even an ant couldn't crawl mm. underneath you. So we're gonna pick our left foot up. Nice. You can tuck your hands underneath your booty. Mm -hmm. Right heels come off the mat. Head, neck, and shoulders lift off the mat. The higher your feet, the easier this will be. Oh. The lower your heel to the <laughs> ground, the more challenging this is. And we're gonna hold this. We're gonna light our Woo! campfire. We're gonna okay. hold this for 30 How seconds. How you doing, Sarkay? Walk up, thank you. you. So we have a, we have a like commercial. <laughs> This I want tough. one of those milkshakes. No one was. Why wasn't I offered the milkshake? <laughs> the milkshake sitting for three, good. for two, and one. Sit it up, everybody. Great. Job. I think I'm stuck. How do you feel? I actually feel really good. <laughs> That's just right. Good. It's like I we did that. Something. I hope know. you did it with us as well. Thank I you so we, much. I hope we got <laughs> another milkshake. Our workout Ooh. partners. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. And if you're feeling a little extra lazy, we've got a workout you can do from the comfort of your couch. Here to show us how it's done, trainer Vicky Justice. The point of this workout is that it can be done by anyone, anywhere, anytime. All it's right. a few minutes long and it makes you feel just so good in okay. just a few minutes. What's I love the first it. workout? So the first exercise. I'm we like, are gonna... I want to do whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Well, She's not working out on the floor. <laughs> so, Vicky, you were saying, what, what's, what's the first one? We got to lay on our side. Okay. Yes. So, for the first exercise. <laughs> I'm following her around everywhere. Like, well, well, you let her go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> laughing is also good for your abs. Thank That's you. true. Okay. <laughs> so, for the first laugh? exercise, Al, you want to be careful with your head. Okay. We are going to do side leg raises. So, okay. staying with your core tight, you're going to raise your leg up just a bit, not too high, okay. come back down. So this works your glute medius, which is the upper outer part of your booty, and your TFL. Well, this right. is so medius. This is, and really and truly, if we're watching something on TV, mm -hmm. you yes. can almost just do this while Absolutely. it passes the time. Okay. Exactly. How many times should we do this? Like 12 to 20 reps. It just depends on your own fitness level, uh -huh. but you don't have to go too high. <laughs> okay. What's another lower body one? Uh, another lower body one is a clamshell. So you want to put your legs together like okay. this, mm -hmm. keeping your heels together. You're going to open your knee up like this, back down. You should feel this one in your glute maximus. Some producers going to lose their job over this thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well some producer great. didn't make you wear one size too small. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the upper body. How about we okay. move on to the upper body? Okay, upper body, we're gonna be seated so we can, okay. you know, you guys can come up on the couch. Oh, okay. everybody up. <laughs> You're such a we can be more mature about this. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Vicky. Vicky. Sorry, Vicky. Okay. So we're gonna start off with robot arms. So you're gonna put your arms up like this. Make sure your elbows are aligned with your shoulders. Okay. And all you're gonna do is bring your arms like this and up. Very easy. <laughs> kind of like you? those cats you see in the Chinese restaurant. Oh, yes. <laughs> it has a new name. Yeah, exactly. But this is great for your shoulders, for your mobility, Vicky, for your I'm upper sorry. body. And honestly, I feel it. And how, how many times do you do this one? Same thing, like 15 to 20 times. Okay. And this is great because you can do this at your desk when yeah. you're at work. Just, I mean, your coworkers might be like. And how okay. about a good, a good core exercise? Core exercise. We're going to do some lean back marches. You oh, want to lean back lean just back. a little bit okay. until you feel your abs engage. Okay. And you're going to bring one knee up and switch. This is good. And again, yeah. if you're watching, let's say, a 30 minute show, you can get all of these Exactly, in. and these yeah. are so and easy that you don't really have to up. think okay. about them that much. You yeah. Honestly, if you're show. watching TV a couple times a week or whatever you're doing and you could do this and get this in, Vicky, it's not bad. You. And I want to apologize formally for my friend Al. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> and that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, scan the QR code to sign up for our newsletter. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Today All Day. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, you know, I almost got out of this one That's clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I mastered because I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good, and I'm finding some confidence in the kitchen. Now, my friend and all-around superstar, Drew Barrymore, and her chef, BFF, Pilar Valdez, are gonna teach me a few weeknight favorites. We're gonna be making a watermelon salad with pistachio duca and shrimp scampi with bucatini, both from their cookbook, Rebel Homemaker. I am so excited to be cooking with these ladies today, so let's get started. Drew and Pilar, I need to know everything you know. Well, I know that I love you. I know that I love you. She really does, and we're so excited to be here. What's the plan, Pilar? So today's plan, we're gonna cut the watermelon, pickle the rind, prepare the duca, assemble the salad, cook the shrimp and pasta, make the pan sauce, plate, and serve. So first up yeah. for our watermelon salad, we're gonna break down the watermelons. I do love a good piercing, but now of course I'm stuck. Oh, wow, this Boom. Was... Savannah, you're doing great over there. Oh. It's not a competition. Mad. Look at the difference between our two heads. <laughs> Look at your melons. Oh my gosh. And put the other half That's what I was aside. thinking. Why are we so juvenile? <laughs> I don't know, but when that's we why we're such good friends. I know. Okay. I see how this episode yes. is going to oh, go. Yeah. You're going to lob off the top of it. We're going to just take off the dark green. 
Mine doesn't look anything like yours. So does, what Pilar. happened with yours, Drew, is that you didn't. Um, you took off. You were overachieving. You took off the skin and the rind. Um, but our first step was just to do uh, the skin. So Savannah, you can continue on what you were doing, and okay. now we're just taking off the rind. So exactly okay. the same kind of oh, okay. sawing and shaving motion downwards. Okay. And now are we keeping this rind? We are, because that's what we're going to pickle, oh. actually. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take your watermelon, and you could cube this, but for this salad, mm -hmm. I actually like to cut it in irregular shapes. I feel good about this part. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, it does. So you're going to take your rind, rind basically, yes. and we're going to uh, dice it. Okay. You're going to flip it over so it has, yeah. Savannah, I can see the claw coming out, which is really good. I'm trying to learn. You want to tuck in those I like digits. to cut like this. I do too. I'm like, I like to lop off. And this would Thickness. be a dicing, this not is a, a dice. mince. Nope. Because What's it's pretty What's the difference chunky. between dicing and mincing? Size. So the, absolutely. Size, size matters. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip on that. What are we drinking? This is so good, by the it way. Is so what good. is it? It's a mocktail. It's a version of a Pimm's. It's based on a Pimm's cup, which is usually with gin. But this one oh, is without. Way, you would never know there was an alcohol. <laughs> Oh here. my gosh. Drew what is loves, that? Very gingery, right? Yeah, so there's ginger beer, and Drew, I know you love tea, so it's a combination of black and rooibos. Okay, that's a very unique flavor. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. so good. All right, so wait, what do right. we do now? Pickling anything is a flavor profile that I really love. Oh, me too. It is basically uh, equal parts water and apple cider okay. vinegar. So, so Anna, three so quarters of that. water. Mm -hmm. Three fourths cup water, three fourths cup apple cider vinegar. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then one you can actually, um, and then one, mm -hmm. exactly. Ooh, I like the honey equal bear. parts um, a lot. Yeah. It's just such an easy brain no. yes. ratio to remember. Yes. Yeah. Let's add in uh, the salt. What, are you sprinkling it on purpose? Uh -huh. or you just trying? <laughs> no, I am because I don't like the dump. It's yeah. like, then you have to work harder to get the solubility. If you shake it in, I feel like it's just a better That's method. actually a very good pro tip. And right. then Drew, I'm gonna have you add in the fennel seed, which is on top. Half teaspoon. Half seed, teaspoon of fennel please, seed. Honey. Lovely. Sprinkle on in. All right, you got crazy. It's I usually do. Um, coriander There you go. I'm and we're going to do half a teaspoon of the cumin. Oh. And then the last thing is half a teaspoon of the peppercorn. I love pink peppercorn, and I especially love it on green dishes. Yeah. Oh, Savannah, perfect. have you had pink peppercorn? No, I before? have not. So they're really, and you can actually take a little and take a little bite, and they're like very fruity and floral. Oh, yeah, but they're peppery. not super, a little peppery, but not as pungent as a yeah. black. It's gonna basically come up to a little bit of a simmer. Okay. And as long as the honey and the salt is completely dissolved, then you can pull it off. Drew, you're gonna carefully pour it into our one cup okay, of she knows water. Me too well. She's like, you know that graceful <laughs> ginger side of yourself yes. that you don't have <laughs> tried right. to tap into it. Pouring it right over. Yep. Then what happens? After 30 minutes, this is going to be good to go. It's like so easy. Super easy. That's pickling. That's pickling. pickling. Boom. Boom.
Now we're moving on to the pistachio dukkha component of our salad. Okay. Dukkha is an Egyptian condiment. It's usually a blend of like nuts and seeds and spices. You okay. should have some coriander, coriander. seed. Mm -hmm. Two teaspoons, Two teaspoons of coriander seed. Okay. Is this, is this the cumin? That's cumin. Okay, mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm Absolutely. going off. Oh. Going wrong. Okay, then it's She's one, rogue. One so quarter so cup sesame hold, seeds. Hold on the sesame oh. seeds, actually, Savannah. So you're going to toast that Let me first. turn it up. How high should it be? Um, let's do medium. Okay, Okay, and it's an empty plate. There's no oil or anything. No, absolutely okay. not. You want it in a dry skillet. They have skillet. oils on them, right? Yes, they do. So they're starting to release it. And you just have to shake it occasionally, not okay. constantly. Okay. Um, and you're gonna notice a change in color. They're gonna start to get a little darker, but really what you're looking for, Savannah, is the smell. Okay. It's gonna start to like release this like toasty smell. You're gonna smell the coriander. It's gonna mm -hmm. be very floral. It's starting. Can you smell yeah. it? Yeah. Let's give that a shake, actually. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, I can. Ooh, I like it. And yes. on the average, would you say about two minutes, Kalar? About two minutes, okay. yeah. Take it off, because okay. I can see a okay. little bit of heat. Let's okay. turn oh, yeah. off the oh, pan. Geez. Okay, yeah. now what? Um, and you're gonna divide, actually, the spices between your and Drew's mortar and pestle. Habsy, habsy. What I like to do when I have spices is that instead of go in and like bash immediately, I kind of like to muddle, so a circular motion, and that helps it break down because okay. if you go in and you're bashing, yeah. it's gonna like firework spices okay, so I'm everywhere. like just kind of stirring. So, yep. Can I start smashing yes, now? Yes, I think so. And you can apply a little more pressure to Savannah. Am I trying to get this to like a very fine grain? Pretty, pretty fine. So with the dukkha, we want a little bit of a mm. play on texture. So you'll have fully ground pieces and then some pieces that are just more broken up. So I'm happy mm -hmm. with where mine is at. How so do you like mine? What do you think? Beautiful. Oh, Lovely. Okay. That's, that's, good. Yeah. That's and nice. I think you you guys can both pop uh, your spices, Savannah and Drew, into that bowl. Okay. Into one bowl. Into one okay. bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yours is nicer. I, and think. that's really nice because then you guys have a, a I, texture. Yeah. Yes. Play on I texture. I went hard, you went soft. Oh. Well. So now we're going to toast the sesame seed. Okay, we need one quarter cup sesame seed. So mm -hmm. just let it go in there. Unlike, yeah, you can shake it a little. You can use the spatula. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sesame seeds, as soon as they start to change color, you want to take them off the heat. So keep stirring that, Savannah. They're going to go golden really, really quickly. I can okay. smell them, so I think we're almost there. Okay. And you definitely don't want to burn them. No. Burning bad. Yeah. Okay. Burning bad. <laughs> While Savannah is uh, toasting the sesame seeds, Drew, I'm going to have you add in um, our salt. Our That's flaky a, sea salt. Is this a maldon? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's a One. tablespoon into that bowl where your spices are. I love a maldon. I do too. It's so different I than other salts. I put it on salts. top of my chocolate chip cookie. Yes. yes. Nice. Look at you. I did not. <laughs> I have a little baking skill. And then Drew, you're going to do, um, those are hemp hearts or hemp seeds. Two tablespoons. And hemp seeds. Savannah. Yes, they're really great forms of protein and fiber and vitamins, actually. And again, it's like we're playing a lot with textures. Yeah. So that's a really lovely addition. Your favorite, Drew, half a teaspoon. I would say, Savannah, maybe 30 more seconds on that, and then we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, a pink peppercorn okay. and just a smidge, 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 smidge of black pepper. Okay. Smidge. That's more that, than that's a funny. Smidge. That's definitely more than a smidge. Wow, you have a hot. <laughs> I love <laughs> spicy time. Everything okay. could be coated <laughs> and rubbed in pepper. All right, do you think we're good on these seeds? Let me see. I feel like they're mm. almost there, okay. right? They're almost turning golden. <laughs> <laughs> but we need music. All right, okay. I think that looks really good, Savannah. Okay. So let's uh, turn off the heat. Dump them in. Yeah, dump it in. And now we have the pistachios. I can just kind of like Absolutely. do this like Savannah, Julia Child like stuff. Too. That's great. You're kind of rocking back and forth. Am I making you proud, Pilar? You are making me so proud. This second. <laughs> I'm actually going to stop you guys right there because I really like the two textures that we're playing with. Okay. Savannah's on like a finer and then Drew's is on a rough. I so think we're, we've established this a is a really good combo. <laughs> we're going to scoop all those nuts into this bowl. Scooping the nuts. Yeah. Pretty colors, too. Really, really pretty, yeah. And Drew, you're gonna give it a good mix. No pistachio left behind. There. No pistachio mm -hmm. left behind, please. Okay, that looks amazing. Yeah, and I'm busting out something here that I was told. It's a gold box Savannah's tasting spoons. Do you have special spoons? They're just special because you're supposed to taste your food. Did you know that? I didn't, and now I do. 
So just take a little. Take a little, and and then we can sort of play from there. So mm. it's gonna be, it's gonna have that floral from. I yes. like it. I wouldn't yes. change one thing. Would you? It has Perfect. enough salt, enough pepper. It, it really, really does. does. <laughs> All right, success, ladies. The love story <laughs> continues. We made duka. We're gonna assemble the salad, but when we're plating it, it's gonna be a little bit of a friendly competition. Ooh. And then. <laughs> Let's go. You guys got this. <laughs> All right, okay. so in your little jar um, is a simple lemon vinaigrette. Okay. It's just lemon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Okay. And it's separated a little, so just give them a little shake. Mm -hmm. It emulsifies it, which is there you ever go, so Drew. important. If anyone's doing an oil and vinegar salad, emulsify it first, it'll taste 50 times better. Okay. Drop in your knowledge. All right, so in your bowl, you have a little bit of arugula. So I like to coat a little bit of the bowl. I know, it sounds crazy, right, Savannah? But You're I'm not going to use all of that. No, so. you don't have to, and you dress the taste. But when you coat the side of the bowl, you're basically not dumping it on the leaves. And then now we can start building. Okay. So a little arugula on the plate. Remember, oh. you're making something beautiful. Okay. okay. A arugula on the plate. This is where the composition is. Yes. OK, so and what's our next one? Your watermelon slices, you're going to dip it in the dukkha. Oh, dip it in the duka. And however you want to <laughs> dip it is up to you, and you're gonna lay it yeah, on you, the plate. You duka you. you. <laughs> so there you go. So you're just dipping those watermelon slices, and oh, I like to leave a bit of it without the duka, just so that it has that freshness, and then you'll get the pop. Oh, so some duka and some don't. <laughs> But I mean, I'm actually asking. I feel like this should be like late night comedy. I know. I know. <laughs> Just cheesy, like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> By the way, uh, the best. Okay. Here, there's no rules. Okay. Don't forget to finish also with your pickled watermelon rind. You can scatter it around. How can I win? What if I make like a tower? I know. You can By totally way, make a I'm tower. Thinking of tower. Little the like whole time. Jenga. Okay. And then you can finish with a little bit of Maldon salt also, okay. which just like brings all those flavors together. I learned from A little that. Salt Bay Maldon salt. Oh, I love it. I don't know. Shall we oh, Vogue, <laughs> Vogue for the camera? Yes, that's what, I think we know who's his best. It's yours. <laughs> this looks very pretty. Really? It really does. I like I your little tower. I feel like they're both they're both pretty. They, I also feel like these are three extremely different, different approaches. <laughs> yeah. You went like just put it on the plate. No, actually, I feel like yours has like a, um, a, a, a Lines, strategic right? pattern. Yeah, no, it does. And yours is sort of abundant, <laughs> and mine is amount. I love it. All, All right. right, shall Cheers. we? Shall we walk? Yeah. Let, oh, Cheers, let's guys. Down.
sharing one of Drew's favorite recipes. Scampi. 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 Who's going to devein and have their way with those shrimp? Well, they actually are already peeled and deveined, although Drew is killer deveining them. <laughs> All right, but we've got the water boiling. We've got the water boiling. Do, do we salt it like the sea? I love that. Say it again, Savannah. I'm, salt it like the sea. Thank you. Okay. So, Drew, what I'm going to have you do actually is season the shrimp. So that's actually baking soda. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do just a quarter teaspoon, Drew, and you're going to sprinkle it all over the shrimp. And the reason why we do baking soda, mm -hmm. I love it, is that it basically helps no the shrimp brown and get this really beautiful color. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna do salt and pepper mm -hmm. on your shrimp. I feel like you should be doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've it with salt and then we'll uh, give good. it a good toss. I love okay. a little flour, a Look little it, I egg wash. I'm there shimmying you my salt. No not dumping, dumping over it. here. <laughs> no, not anymore, I'll never dump I'll again. Love. So we're gonna let the shrimp that has salt and pepper and baking soda sit for about like five or 10 minutes. And meanwhile, we are going to attack our garlic. Okay. Um, so today we're gonna slice the garlic fine. We don't wanna crush it because that's just gonna burn in our sauce. Mm. So what I like to do is just take the tip off. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of brownness. And you're gonna spin it, we're gonna cut it lengthwise. Not okay. Fast. You have some olive oil. We're gonna do three tablespoons. Happy to eyeball it. There's also a measure if you'd like, but well, they, like, I've been encouraged to eyeball, I so I'm going to try. Eyeball. I think this is one tablespoon. I think that's good. Two. Yeah. Three. Beautiful. Do you agree? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? That's really, really great. And then you're just going to rock Our it. Our baby's all grossed <laughs> up. <laughs> She's eyeballing. Oh, no. I eyeballed. Okay. Okay. And what you're going to do, Savannah, is add the garlic. Mm -hmm. Put it right in there? Yeah. You don't want too high of a heat yeah. and to end up like me who burns their garlic. And okay. Drew, you're gonna add the red pepper flakes. Okay. <clears throat> and having enough oil helps you not burn the garlic. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many? Half a teaspoon, so just that measure. And if you want things spicier, you can go more. You no, know, she again. does. Miss spicy she, she likes. It's gonna start to change color. It's gonna go kind of translucent, translucent. and sticky. I, I have feel it like in. You can start pulling. Okay. Um, you do this. So we were just ooh, um, infusing the olive oil mm, basically with good. that garlic and pepper okay. uh, flavor. Okay. Okay. So what? Throw this in. You're gonna throw it in, and then you're gonna give it a good stir. And we're using bucatini, um, which is basically like a, a thicker spaghetti with a hole in it. Okay. Um, but you could use any sort of long shape of pasta, and you're gonna cook that pasta until just all dented okay. because we're gonna finish it off in the sauce. Okay. Um, but sauce. you're gonna lay the shrimp down in a single layer. Okay. And you're not gonna stir it, you're gonna shake it, you know, lay occasionally, it lay it down, yeah. Actually, will you hold, Savannah? You don't think it's hot enough? Yeah, so. Stand back. How are you, what are you looking at right to know if it's so hot enough? So you want a, a little bit of ripple, you do not want smoke. We're not okay. like, trying no. to. And no bubble. <laughs> All right, let me. Just... You want that sizzle and you're not getting it. Oh yeah, it. I'm definitely wanting, I can see it a little bit here. Let me, can I borrow that? There you go, here you go, there oh. you go, there you go. Oh. So let's start. Yeah, interesting. I stepped away. <laughs> Everything started functioning. <laughs> Meanwhile, my arm is going to fall off. Um, holding these. Oh, yeah. Shrimp. That, you know what? I hear what you're talking about yeah. now, Pilar. Yeah. There's a definite sizzle. That's sizzle. why she wanted to hear that. No wonder. Yeah. All right. People always talk about, talk about cooking, you know, like smell and what you can see. Mm. I'm always like, I'm like, I can hear my water boiling. I can hear it sizzling. Oh, like, I like that. She brought in the that. strongest sense of them all. <laughs> exactly. The color will start to tell you when pink. it's cooked. It starts to get pink. Its and tails are shirt. already pink. Yep. Do it's, I need to flip them over ever? Not yet. You know yet. what, let's, I think it's a little too early, but you, let's peek at one and basically the color will have changed and it's gonna have a little bit of like kind of, sp ooh, okay. That was so good to me. A little more. Okay. And you can give the pan a little bit of a light shake but we're not. You like, don't mess with them. Don't not yeah. them. So Savannah, when you flip them, you're gonna kind of move them to a different. Okay. Uh, They're gonna go a different, different spot. Moving a different go. neighborhood. Yeah, because it does. You know, some stuff a will have zip code I know. I'm gonna have you add two tablespoons of that butter. So that's one, one two, two. Beautiful. Just into that pan. Uh, Ooh, now lovely. we're talking. The reason why we put just the two pats of butter right now is that you're basically starting to build that flavor. Right. You touch it with your finger right now. 
you see Pretty how firm, firm it is? Yes. Okay. Is that a good thing? That is a really good thing. Okay. So we're almost there. So we're just going to rescue the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Take them out? Take them out. Leave the butter in and cook in. Okay. And oh, they're, they're basically like That's almost it. done. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish them off with the pasta and the sauce. Drew, will you actually, speaking of pasta, stir. I've forgotten. Um, please stir it. Test and it. then maybe just uh, try a new. No, very far. Nowhere near. All, right. All right. Hard as a rock. <laughs> Al dente. Stiff right. as a board. This is like, can I, pencils? Sure. Uh, that's great. So that no, I, that's, oh yeah. So in this little carafe here, mm -hmm. we have a uh, white w wine. Wine, okay. Dump it in. Dump it in, and then you're gonna take your wooden Ooh. spoon. Deglaze? Deglaze. What is deglazing, Savannah? Scraping the nasty bits off the bottom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, the, I know, the flavor bits. Yes, absolutely. I did learn a deglazing. Um, I love that. All right, you're gonna do, um, not the all that butter, actually. You're gonna do four more tablespoons, basically. One, yeah. two. Oh, look yeah. at you eyeballing Three. it. Yeah, it's impressive. All four. right, and that goes into the pan. Look at yeah. This is hey, right here. Duty. This is graduate school. <laughs> We're gonna dump in the cooked garlic, all that oil, and mm. the chili. We're gonna let this go. I want you guys to taste it. Where it is, there's Savannah's golden oh, the box. Golden spoon. But you so have there's one. no lemon yet. It tastes lemony to me now. Really? Oh, from the white wine, right? Oh. And that's gonna reduce in color. Oh my! What God, do you think? It's incredible! <laughs> I'm actually just gonna come in. Mm -hmm. What's and this lemon juice? So it's two tablespoons of lemon. We're not gonna do all of it because I want to do kind of to taste. Mm -hmm. So let's start there. Fine. I think. What do you think over there? Uh, that, that. No, not done. Still not done. Well, actually, I like Pilar to test this. Because happy to noodles keep cooking. Yeah, and, and we're gonna finish it off in the sauce as well. So this maybe might it's actually be almost Pretty good. there. Mm -mm. Still one more minute. Yeah, yeah, almost there. Should I turn it down so more? Yeah, let's turn it's that really down. going crazy yeah. here. And how's that here sounding now, Pilar? <laughs> yeah. Now we got That's it. That's the sound I want. I like to pick herbs too for like yeah. salads, but oh. for something like this, I'm like, no, that's totally fine. Okay. So you want to get it again. What did like, you do? Did you cut off the stems? I put the stems underneath. So I cut oh. them, cut the stems. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm oh. grabbing this like before this? Yeah. I forget everybody. And then tuck them so under it. Oh. oh, she's saving her pasta water. <laughs> oh, I like your today show theme. Pasta water. Okay, and then I put the stems under. So, yeah. So yes. I know it's uncomfortable, but yeah. just like you okay. can go slow and you're going to do a rough Because it's ready. Drew reports that the pasta is All right. Okay. And Savannah, you're going to start putting that pasta in. Mm -hmm. And it's totally Ooh. fine that it has the liquid because yeah, that's just going to make a, a, a nicer emulsified sauce. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Look how beautiful that sauce is. Oh my gosh, this is, looks right? incredible. And I think you do need a little bit more pasta water, Drew. Would you oh, think? Just, aren't you just glad a you little, saved it, a Drew? A little bit, a touch. Give me a little splash. That's okay. great. Wow. Yeah. And is the shrimp just the very last thing I put on there? Yes. I like this big old skillet yeah. too. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Makes me feel like a real chef. Um, Savannah, you're gonna kill the heat. Okay. Done. And then you're gonna garnish with your chopped parsley. Right in the bowl, huh? Right in there. And I don't want to go crazy, right? Just a little like that. Just a, just a little for color, and then okay. you can give it a toss again. It's with, uh, the shrimp oh gosh, is this looks so good. Perfect. <laughs> like wow. it's ridiculous. And Perfect. how are we gonna plate it? We got a bowl for you. Okay. Yeah, okay. This, part, this is gonna be a little tricky. Um, because this thing weighs six billion pounds. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Okay, look. I think we did pretty good. Cool. Oh, yes. I think we did perfect. Look at it. Wow, and then you. By can the way, I feel like you should Lion King that now. <laughs> the ball. Oh! Yes. <laughs> wow. And then you can serve it with a little bit more fresh parsley, chili okay. flakes, lemon. Okay. Garnish. Love it. Garnish it up. Just a little bit. We, yeah. we chopped those. Let's go. Yeah. Guys, shall we? Let's chow down. Ah! Let's do it.
so oh, yeah. Nice. How so beautiful does this look? I mean, this is our garden party. It's so pretty. It is really, shall we? Yes. Okay. Please. My first Dooku. I've never had a Dooku before. Dooka. The Dooka. <laughs> exactly. It's so good. Mm. You really get those spices. You do. It's delish. In the back of the palate and through the nose. Mm. But mm. it's so cold and refreshing. Also, right? And then you have the pickle that comes through that is just like I a little floral. A little... Listen, Ooh. I love that pickled rind. Yeah. I never knew I could feel that way about a watermelon rind. I'm really excited that you're saying that. Me too. That to this is a whole new world for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So I want to show you um, some people call it a nest. Um, I'm really going to focus on the pasta. If I catch a little Clear shrimp in there, for you. I catch a little shrimp in there. So be it. What are we doing? We're going to make a little round ball. Well, you're supposed to make a pasta nest, but this is not working. And then oh. my tongs also won't go all the way to the. God darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know what will really help? Let what? me try this again. Let me get it with a fork. Okay. Because that. Um, like a fork I feel oh. like this is gonna, yeah. yeah. There you go. should work much nicer. Do you wanna nest there me? you go. I wanna nest you. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. And then you just kinda dip the ladle. There you go. Oh my gosh, And fancy then you pants. can unfork it. And then a little bit of shrimp. You're so classy. <laughs> Here. Thank there. you, yeah. Third <laughs> All right, time I need third, a charm. Third time's a charm. I believe in you, Drew. Okay. Right. So. Let's see. I'm oh no, I'm you're nesting. Oh, there That's you your go. best go. nest yet. There you See? go. See, third time's the charm. Gonna, oh, and that then, is beautiful. That's so pretty. Oh, there you go. Go. I'm chowing down. I can't wait yes, anymore. Yes, yes. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. You guys cooked that shrimp like perfectly. The shrimp came out real good. Real right? money. Yeah. Perfect. I agree. Money shrimp. Proud of us. And that like little pop from the shrimp mm. too, that baking mm. soda like really affects the texture, so it feels like super fresh. It does. Ladies. I'm so proud of us. Can we raise a glass? To a friendship. To a friendship. To a friendship. Cheers. Good Monday morning. Israel ramping up its air assault on Gaza. But is the ground invasion on hold? It's October 23rd. This is today. Breaking overnight, Israel carrying out the most intense airstrikes of the war. Fears growing, the violence could spread to other parts of the Middle East. We don't want to see a second or third front develop. And this morning, reports the U.S. is encouraging Israel to delay a ground invasion. In Gaza, a convoy of much-needed aid just arriving overnight. We're live with the very latest. Clinging to hope. Families of hostages being held by Hamas meeting with Israel's president this morning after two Americans were released over the weekend inside the new push to bring hundreds home. They're running. Nine new Republicans throw their hats into the House Speaker's race as the chaos and paralysis head into a third week, the key meeting set for today. Expanding the search, police intensifying the manhunt for the suspect accused of killing a Maryland judge who oversaw his divorce proceedings. We're gonna catch this guy. Just to have the new leads and reward in the case. All that plus costume controversy. Hollywood stars lashing out at their own union over its rules for strike-friendly Halloween outfits. No popular TV and movie characters allowed. Why many actors are booing that decision. And Philly's special. Hurts. The Eagles pulling away late for a big win against the Dolphins, while the Chiefs and Travis Kelsey win again. And there's another catch by Kelsey. Taylor 